Nintendo Directs might be one of the most hyped form of content released by Nintendo that's not a video game. And over the years, there's been over 148 Nintendo Directs ever released since starting in 2011. And I decided I'm gonna go and watch every single one of them. I'll be honest, I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I did not think it would take nearly as long as it ended up taking to go through all of them, but it was a wild experience going through Nintendo's history and seeing how not only Nintendo Directs evolved, but also how Nintendo's approach to announcing, releasing games, and their overall strategy would change with it. So why don't we do a deep dive through history, going all the way back to the very first Direct in 2011, all the way to where we are in current day. It's a interesting ride this will be. Okay, 2011 marked the very beginning of the Nintendo Direct. I think Nintendo just discovered YouTube might have been a thing and they're like, oh, we can promote games on here. Nonetheless, this first Direct is quite a bit different than what we expected compared to what the Directs look like nowadays. So, October 21st, 2011, this is where everything started. No fancy intro, no countdown, just good old-fashioned Nintendo of America President Reggie fils -Ami introducing what would become one of Nintendo's most anticipated forms of pre-release content. It's actually crazy looking at this now, knowing about how these types of Directs have evolved into something so different nowadays, but Reggie goes as far as even introducing what a Nintendo Direct is right here. Hi, I'm Reggie from Nintendo of America, and this marks a new endeavor for Nintendo. Direct video news feeds designed just for you. So after that little introduction to get right into it, Reggie decides to, you know, try to hype up the Nintendo 3DS. Because at this time, in 2011, the Nintendo 3DS had already been out for a couple of months and its sales had substantially slowed down after its initial launch, which does make me speculate, was the Nintendo Direct an attempt to regularly remind consumers that there's like this new DS out there on the market and that you want it? But not even 24 seconds into this video, Reggie hits us with one of his classic Reggie quotes. For this first installment, we've got some important news if you're an owner of Nintendo 3DS or just thinking of becoming one. And really, if you're neither one yet, What's wrong with you? You know, Reggie really was a gem. We didn't realize how good we had it until after he retired. But let's get into the Nintendo Direct. This was like the big time where Nintendo would for the first time ever showcase things that would be coming in the future. And these are always so exciting. So what did Nintendo have in store for their fan base? The addition of Hulu Plus service, which is coming soon to Wii and Nintendo 3DS. Hulu? The first announcement of any Nintendo Direct ever, <laughs> historically speaking, with how massive these things are now, is a Hulu announcement? And this is 2011. I don't think Hulu was, like, that good back then. I mean, I don't even know if it's that good now, but especially back in 2011. Also on the way, at the end of November, is another system update for Nintendo 3DS. Okay, any speculations what the big system update that's going to be announced at this first ever Nintendo Direct is going to be? I don't know, Virtual Console maybe would be really cool at this point. With this update comes 3D video recording. It will be added to the 3D picture taking you already enjoy. And up to 10 minutes of 3D video can be recorded of anything you want. Oh, 3D video. Great. Many Nintendo 3DS owners are already familiar with features coming from DreamWorks Animation and now a landmark production is on the way. I really like Reggie's approach here to like trying to, you know, have people feel like they have FOMO, like they're missing out on crazy 3DS functionality, like 3D videos and whatever he's about to announce. This better be a really big announcement because we're already pretty deep into this direct and we've gotten Hulu and 3D videos so far. It's the thriller song that you know and love featuring DreamWorks Animation's Shrek characters. It's a one-of-a-kind 3D experience you can't buy anywhere else. What? Okay, okay, I did not think we were getting Shrek in the first ever Nintendo Direct, especially this early on. It's just a video though? What? Okay, honestly, this Nintendo Direct just keeps getting better. The catalog of music videos from real life performers will also grow with a 3D version of Don't Stop from Foster the People. How are we this far into the Direct and it's still going like this, guys? Nintendo 3DS is about games, and the total game library is growing 
in ways it never has before. All right, time to talk about games. Let's go. It's about time. The first is Freaky Forms, your creations alive. Here's how it works. Draw your bubbly creature in any shape you want and let them roam across a 3D landscape. What is this, Reggie? <laughs> okay, so we won't play every single part of every Nintendo Direct, but the first thing he shows off is Freaky Forms. Um, which was this. Then he shows off Pushmo. Then Dylan's Rolling Western, followed by Swap Note, which kind of looks like an evolved version of Picto Chat. I mean, these are just games that are being added to the eShop, so it's like low stakes, really, but definitely a interesting choice to try to like hype up the Nintendo crowd. I don't know who this direct is for, honestly, at this point. Okay, after that, we finally start to get something interesting, which is a good turnaround for this Nintendo direct, I'll be honest. We get a little bit of talk about Pokemon Rumble blast which was about to hit stores at the time then he talks a little bit about super mario land 3d which also was going to be coming out which to be fair these are games that were highly anticipated but they also were games that were already announced so it wasn't like any big massive reveal here people already knew that these games are coming so it kind of was just like a commercial reminding people that the games were coming out in the following weeks there's then talk about mario kart 7 which also was set to release that holiday season and reggie plugs any wada asks which man and what a throwback those interviews used to be. There were really cool deep dives into games by the then Nintendo president and late Nintendo president Satoru Iwata. And that was a series that was running all the way since 2006, and it kind of predates what Nintendo Directs are nowadays. I guess this technically was the era where the Nintendo Wii was starting to wrap up, because so far we're at the end of the Direct, and the only thing mentioned is a big game, but the only game mentioned on this Nintendo Direct, which was The Legend of Zelda Skyward Sword, which also was set to release about a month after this Direct. So that's the last thing that they wrap up with, which of course means that there wasn't really any big surprising announcements at this first Nintendo Direct. This seemed more like an infomercial for very casual Nintendo fans who maybe haven't been up to date at this point as to what was coming out. But still, a wild first Nintendo Direct. And it's going to be interesting to see how every Nintendo Direct moving forward would begin to evolve. And we'll pick up the pace as we go along, but I did want to just kind of take our time and marinate a little bit over this first one. The next official Nintendo Direct would actually come in December, but this was back in a time where Nintendo Directs were only being released released in America and Japan separately, so the entirety of the next Nintendo Direct was in Japanese. It was hosted by Satoru Iwata. This one seemed a little bit more like the more common, more modern format that we see for Nintendo Directs, but since there are so, so many Nintendo Directs that we are going to be going through in this video, we're going to be focusing just on the ones that were English released. Still, this one was cool. It showed off some games like Kid Icarus Uprising and some other stuff. We can fast forward to February 22nd, 2012, when the next Nintendo Direct would release, which essentially was the second, or I guess you could say third ever Nintendo Direct, which released in Japan, North America, Europe, and Australia simultaneously, which was a big deal. This time around, the video has a cool little introduction logo. We got this like red going on, which is kind of a staple nowadays. The production quality seems a lot better, and we're introduced to Reggie again at the Nintendo of America headquarters. This one doesn't mess around. We get right into talking about the games and what's coming up in this Nintendo Direct, like the multiplayer mode of Kid Icarus Uprising. I honestly forgot that Kid Icarus even had a multiplayer component. I always thought that was just a single player only game. I'm very surprised. They announced that they're going to be showing off some stuff from Mario Tennis Open. After teasing some other stuff that would be coming up, we then cut away to Bill Trennan at the Nintendo Treehouse. Bill Trennan's really good at like talking about Nintendo stuff and whatnot, but in this presentation, he kind of looks like a disappointed parent getting ready to punish their kid even though they don't want to for some reason. I don't know if anyone else understands what I just said. Trennan talks a little bit about some of the stuff from the eShop once again, actually going over the stuff from the first Nintendo Direct almost a second time. I think the real interesting stuff though is definitely the talk about Kid Icarus Uprising and the localization process that he talks about here when he sits down up on these chairs up on the second level here. What an interesting like floor layout they have. I like the guy he interviews though. He seems really passionate about trying to like translate and localize this game as effectively as possible for Western audiences. And you can kind of tell that the guy's passionate about the job. Uh, that's a good person to interview here. We then move over to an interview with Eric Peterson, who works as a localization producer on Mario Tennis Open. They chat for a bit. And then we cut back to Reggie, who talks about Xenoblade Chronicles coming to the Wii. And this is actually a really big moment for Nintendo overall because Xenoblade Chronicles was kind of like getting a fresh start with 
with its series, and that would be a mainstay staple for Nintendo moving forward as they made multiple follow-up games to this one. Also, the first game was very impressive for Nintendo Wii hardware. We have one last announcement to share with you today. And for many of you, we've saved the best for last the last story, to be specific. And yes, we kind of get to see the start of what would be a staple Nintendo Direct, where they kind of hype up the final thing that they're gonna talk about. And this time it's the last story, which some people were really, really hyped up for. And that's pretty cool. And then Reggie kind of goes back and recaps a couple of other things that are coming out soon, like Resident Evil Revelations, Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games, Tekken 3D Prime Edition, and Metal Gear Solid 3D. He also talks about the Spirit Camera game, which might use the camera or something, Thing. I'm not 100% sure how this game works. It was like a horror game on the 3DS back in the day, which there was a lot of games that involved photos back then or cameras. What a weird time to be alive. And that would wrap up that Nintendo Direct. And actually, it was a pretty solid Nintendo Direct across the board. It might not be explosively as popular as other Nintendo Directs we'll see, but hey, they were starting to get a rhythm for it. And that's honestly all we got for 2011. 2012 would be a little bit different this time around. We would see the Nintendo Direct evolve a lot, and you could kind of see how Nintendo was picking and choosing what they wanted to focus on to try to lead consumers into whatever initiative Nintendo had internally. Now the next Nintendo Direct we would get would be in April of 2012, and this one would be the European version, hosted by Satoru Iwata, but it would cut away to other Nintendo staff like Satoru Shibata, who was leading Mario Tennis Open. A lot of this Nintendo Direct would just recap the grounds that were covered in the previous Nintendo Direct, once again hyping up the likes of Mario Tennis Open, Kid Icarus Uprising, some stuff going on in the Nintendo eShop. We see a little section on Heroes of Ruin, a game I forgot even existed. Pokemon AR Searcher? What was this game? I don't know if I remember what this was. Was this just a simple like AR game with the camera? It's a title that brings Pokemon into the real world right in front of your eyes with AR or augmented reality technology. This is a motion control shooting game where you have to catch Pokemon that appear around you in the real world. Did we ever actually get that released? Yeah, I don't know if I remember this. Was this tied to the Pokedex? Nonetheless, they also talk about Pokemon Black and White 2, which interestingly enough, of course, those games came out very late in the Nintendo DS life versus the 3DS. So there's like this whole part where they explain that, yes, you can play old DS games on the 3DS. And I still always thought it was weird that the Pokemon game would be coming out on the previous generation hardware if the 3DS really was supposed to shoehorn like, this is the next thing. But they would wait a little bit before doing a mainline Pokemon game on the 3DS. Shibata goes on to talk about some other upcoming games like Mickey Power of Illusion. We get a little bit of backstory there. The Kingdom Hearts 3D Dream Drop Distance. Everybody is waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3 and they almost got it at this point, but it was 3D and it wasn't at all Kingdom Hearts 3. We get the big announcement of a new Final Fantasy experience, and I thought this was gonna be like a game or like a compilation of all the games ported to the 3DS, but it's a, a music game with themes from Final Fantasy games. Yeah. He talks about how everyone was excitedly waiting for Beat the Beat Rhythm Paradise, another one of those games that I had completely missed or forgotten about. I don't know if I ever knew this existed prior to me recording this. There's a big section where he talks about Nintendo 3DS functionality, like the ability to add folders. Wow, big update. And like this functionality where you can take your 3DS to like museums and stuff and do stuff with that. But then finally, we actually get a pretty massive announcement, the release of new Super Mario Bros. 2, which was revealed for the first time ever officially April 21st, 2012. Now, they had been talking about like how there would be another side-scrolling Mario game coming sometime in the future, but this was like the first reveal of it. So this one does get that under its belt here. Now I think we start to move into the dark ages of Nintendo where the Wii era is officially over and we're going into the Wii U era with Nintendo Direct Pre-E3 Edition, which for the first time in a Nintendo Direct, the Wii U was being discussed. Now, the Wii U was already announced a year earlier, but this would be the year that the Wii U would release. So, of course, people were expecting some sort of presentation showing more about the Wii U all this time later, and E3 seemed like the most relevant time. For the first time ever, this Direct shows in a very long-winded way all of the features that the Wii U gamepad will have, like Nintendo NFC readers and 
what buttons are on the controller. They showed some of the changes that they made to the gamepad from its original reveal to now to maximize comfort. Mind you, we are five minutes into discussion of just the controller so far on this Nintendo Direct. It is getting a little bit long. They could have maybe, you know, stepped it up for watch retention or something, even though that wasn't something on the radar back then. They talk about infrared TV mode, where you can change the channel on your TV from your gamepad. Okay, but finally, after like seven minutes, we get to the gameplay stuff, and they show off Wii Sports! The game that launched with almost every single Nintendo Wii back in the day. This was a weird decision to show this game first, because I think a lot of consumers who were more casual definitely didn't know that the Wii U was a brand new console and not like an add-on for the Nintendo Wii. And I think maybe they should have like focused on differentiating that the Wii U was a different thing from the Wii, like the next console, and not like a weird add-on like the Wii Fit board or something like that, because Nintendo had released a lot of little add-on things over the years. I mean, the Wii U had some great ideas, and I was a hardcore Nintendo fan, and I knew the Wii U was the next thing, but a lot of casual people didn't. And while I enjoyed my Wii U, I don't know if this was the greatest way to showcase it, like showing you could draw pictures on the gamepad, like okay. Then they show off the Wii U Pro Controller, which looks a lot like the Wii classic Pro Controller thing that they had. I love Iwata, and I loved his passion for Nintendo and being able to go in front and talk about Nintendo products and be excited about it and all of that. I just don't know if this presentation was the best way to really sell the Nintendo Wii U. But after 12 minutes of talking about the Wii U, we finally get something different in the form of a commercial for... I. I actually don't know what this commercial is. I watched it. I thought it was going to be for like Zombie U or something, but instead it's maybe for the social features that you can use the Wii U for? I think my buddy OctoG123 has it figured out. I guess I have all the help I need here, Warren. So, you don't need me anymore? Uh, nope. See ya. I'm so sad. Where are the games? Honestly, this is something that like Xbox fell into the trap of a couple of years later with the Xbox One where their whole initial presentation was just about like other features outside of gaming. And I always feel like that's not the best way to like sell the people who are watching these events hoping to see what the biggest things in gaming are going to be. Then the next part of the presentation talks about like the Wii and me characters interactivity with like the Mii Plaza and all the different types of Mii's that you can interact with. We are 20 minutes in. And here we keep going with this. Then we get a little talk about connecting online, and then a little bit of talk about the web browser where you can use the gamepad to scroll web pages. <laughs> they show off some other interesting features like being able to show a picture on your television screen. Cool. And that pretty much wraps it up. And okay, I get it. They were not trying to like do any huge reveals since this is their pre E3 Nintendo Direct. But this was very, very, probably not the best like first impression for that E3. This would have been better as, I think, maybe a post-E3 presentation after they talked about their games and maybe something they kind of tack on at the end showing all the features and whatnot, but definitely not like something to just like get you thinking about the Wii U because this was pretty boring. But who knows, maybe a couple of days later at their actual E3 Nintendo Direct, which was the first ever Nintendo Direct at E3, things would drastically turn around and get better. Okay, right away, production quality, so much better. Right out of the gate, we get the announcement that the Nintendo 3DS XL is on the way, which already a pretty good start. The price of $199.99, which is way better than where the 3DS originally launched at with its astronomically high price that they immediately had to cut the price on. And it would release the same day that new Super Mario Bros. 2 would release. A great decision because people have been holding out to buy the next 3DS for quite a while. And I think this probably started the upward trend that the 3DS would eventually get. But remember, the 3DS didn't sell well at the beginning, but eventually it ended up being relatively successful. Maybe not as successful was the first DS, but still it sold decently. You then get to see some cool 3DS games coming out, like Castlevania Lords of Shadow, Mirror of Fate, what a name, uh, Skylanders Giants, cool. Adventure Time got a game, Lego Lord of the Rings was announced, Scribblenauts Unlimited, talks of other games that had already been announced, but just like more info about them, like Epic Mickey or Kingdom Hearts 3D, Lego Batman 2. The Amazing Spider-Man came out on the 3DS, like with Andrew Garfield. I had no idea. But finally, we get a little hint at the upcoming future of Super Smash Bros with this little like a challenger is approaching thing from Melee. They had revealed this a while back that there was going to be another Smash Bros games for the DS and the Wii U. 
So fans were heavily anticipating whatever information we could possibly get at this point. So far, we haven't seen any gameplay, but they talked about how Nintendo partnered with Namco Bandai and that Sakurai would be coming back for this. They talked about other members on the team, like this is a PowerPoint presentation, and uh, that's it. That's all we get. <laughs> um, man. What a time. You'd think they could have shown off like a CGI trailer or something, right? Like the development had started, but no, they went with the PowerPoint presentation and you know what? I, I, I'll i remember this fondly. Okay, we get information about like an art game where we learn how to draw on the 3DS. Okay, then we get an announcement about Kirby's Dream Collection for the Nintendo Wii. Actually, a pretty solid game here. It has multiple Kirby experiences on one game. I actually don't think this was like the worst game to kind of close out the old Nintendo Wii with for the people who were looking for like a game to buy that holiday season, but weren't gonna be like purchasing a Wii U. They talked a little bit about how at E3, Pikmin 3 was revealed and that Pikmin 2 would be seeing a reduced price as a part of the Nintendo Selects program if you want to jump in and give the game a try. Then we get a pretty long portion of the video dedicated just to new Super Mario Bros. 2 and all the different features that you can experience in that game. Fair enough, this was kind of Nintendo's big game at the moment. They also talked about an upcoming Fire Emblem game and how it was going to kind of be a big deal. Then Reggie explains plans for Mario 2 DLC, and it's kind of interesting listening to this now because Nintendo historically hadn't done a lot with DLC before, so hearing Reggie try to explain what DLC is is kind of interesting. I mean, he iterates that it's going to be a full product on its own, but then explains like how DLC works. This is 2012. DLC had been around on all the other consoles for a while, but I guess not for Nintendo. Speaking of new Super Mario Brothers 2, we'll be making new downloadable Coin Rush stages available for purchase after the game comes out. After our developers finish working on the main game, and make no mistake, out of the box, this is a full-featured Mario game, as full-featured as we've ever made, they'll turn their attention to making even more stages so that you could keep playing Coin Rush mode again and again. I can't say how or when we'll be releasing these stages since they haven't even been made yet, but we're excited about the possibilities that online connectivity provides for helping players get more out of the games that they already love the most. We get a little more talk from Reggie directly about the Pokemon games that were releasing on the older DS but could be playable on the 3DS. Okay, Pokemon Dream Radar. That was the AR thing that we saw earlier that I had never heard of, but here in the West, they changed the name to Pokemon Dream Radar. That I had at least heard of, and you could transfer your Pokemon from the Dream Radar, I guess, into Pokemon Black and White too. Little cool gimmick thing to get people to buy a 3DS maybe. I don't know if it worked. I don't think it did. It's a little goofy looking in this trailer, but I guess this was kind of the predecessor for what Pokemon Go would eventually become a few years later. Okay, but you know what? Overall, this presentation for it's like, E3 Nintendo Direct, uh, it was actually pretty good. I still think they should have done the pre-presentation afterwards. I feel like that would have flowed a lot better, but I digress. This one wasn't that bad, and I know that the Nintendo Directs hopefully would only get better from here. We might still have a couple of bad years ahead of us, though. The next Nintendo Direct would be on September 13th, 2012, and they would be previewing the Wii U. They showed off the different types of packs you could buy for a Wii U, one of them being an 8 gigabyte version in white with two AC adapters, one for the gamepad and one for the system. Ooh, an extra little button to tell us that it comes with an HDMI cable. Or you can get the Wii U in black and that would have a 32 gigabyte hard drive. It's actually really funny looking back now because eight gigabytes is incredibly small, even by 2012 standards. But the biggest that they had was 32 gigabytes, which is still not massive, once again, by today's standards. But wait, there's more. This version came with a gamepad stand, a console stand, and a charging cradle. Wow. And it had a sensor bar for if you wanted to play like Wii games. Priced at $299 for the base version and then $349.99 for the deluxe set. This was pretty ambitious for the Wii U, but hey, I mean, the extra $50 for the few extras, I guess Nintendo thought was worth it. They go on to talk about the Wii U resolution that you can experience 720p and 1080p. You know, 2012 finally catching up to like the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3. They keep showing this Legend of Zelda Wii U concept footage of a game that never existed or was in development. I would have loved this to be a real Zelda game though. They then give us some specs on the Wii U gamepad. Then he says this line. However, it will be possible to connect two Wii U gamepads to the console at the same time in the future. Which I don't think actually ever ended up becoming a thing. I don't
don't I don't think they ever did. Can Logan, our editor, check that? Put it on the screen. Did they ever add that? All right, then President Shibata goes on to talk about some of the games that'll be available at launch. Interestingly, they talk about Nintendo Land, which is included in the special premium deluxe bundle version of the Wii U, but not included in the default version. So if you would buy this game at launch separately, which they share here that you will be able to buy it separately, you're already paying as much for the Wii U at that point as the deluxe bundle. So what's the point of this? Like everyone's gonna buy a game, right? If this is like the big Nintendo seller, it just seems like a weird choice. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Now they do spend a lot of time talking about Nintendo Land here and all of the different mini games you can play here and how they took inspiration from other popular Nintendo titles. I mean, it's a cool idea, I guess, but this wasn't like an earth shattering, like must have gaming experience like Wii Sports was for the Wii. This was definitely just something that existed. Then we get the announcement of new Super Mario Bros. U as a launch title. This one was always an interesting choice to me because new Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS was releasing that same year. So it's like two new Super Mario Bros. games coming out at the same time. Then Ubisoft comes in and talks about Rayman Legends a little bit, which actually was a pretty solid game. Maybe not a big like heavy hitter AAA, I gotta buy a console to experience this game, but it was a game that was good. And then Ubisoft talks about Zombie U, which I'll be honest, when Zombie U came out, I thoroughly loved it. This was like in the peak time where zombie hype was at an all time high. The Walking Dead was a really popular show. In a slower paced survival game where like you have one life and permadeath's a thing. It was kind of fun. I did like the bag mechanic where you're trying to like loot your stuff. You have to look at the game pad, which is like looking away from your backpack in real life, kind of letting your guard down, which is like a risk. But you know what? I think maybe I just wasn't really that experienced in good zombie games and maybe was just blinded by the fact that this was a zombie game on a Wii U. I don't know if this game actually was really all that good. Maybe it's something I should take another look at all these years later, but I have a feeling that this game didn't sell well, maybe because it wasn't that good of a game to begin with. There was a couple of cool ideas, but big picture, the game wasn't really all that impressive. It definitely wasn't up to like a AAA standard like you'd expect for a Ubisoft release. They talk about FIFA 13 coming to the Wii U for a total of maybe 15 seconds. And then we get talk about Mass Effect 3 coming to the Wii U as well. I don't know how many people were necessarily looking for like a Mass Effect game on Wii U, but maybe this was to show that like, hey, we can keep up with the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 too. I think this ultimately would end up backfiring having Mass Effect 3 release on the Wii U because I think it reminded people that the Wii U is pretty much at the same level as just the Xbox 360 and PS3 and people knew that those systems were already at the end of their lives and the next gen consoles would be announced. I'm not sure having a game like this that people can compare and contrast to the other systems did the Wii U too much justice. They talk about some pretty boring looking downloadable games. Cool. Come on Nintendo, where's the big reveal here? I'm ready for it. Lego City Undercover. Okay. The game was fine, I guess. I mean, it's kind of like Grand Theft Auto meets Lego, which would be a wild game if that actually existed. We get the announcement for The Wonderful 101, a game that a lot of people were heavily anticipating. And when I mean a lot of people, I mean the 79,000 people that actually ended up buying this game. I think this game got missed by a lot of people. The marketing was really, really slow with this game, and then it failed to meet sales expectations, surprisingly, even with positive reviews. At least in 2023, it finally got a remaster. But probably the biggest and most exciting announcement for the Wii U here was the reveal that Bayonetta 2 would actually be coming to the Wii U and it would even be an exclusive. This is like one of the few big wins that the Wii U actually had in its early years. So at least they had that under their belt to announce here. And then they do like a reminder of some other games that had been announced at like E3 or whatever that were coming to the Wii U, like Assassin's Creed 3. Assassin's Creed 3 was interesting because the game was releasing on October 30th for PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360. And the Wii U of course wouldn't release by then. So it wouldn't released until November after the Wii U came out. There was Ninja Gaiden 3, Batman Arkham City Armored Edition. People weren't actually too excited about the Batman game here because it was just like all the DLC from the previous release of this game that had already come out. And they're like, there's there's other stuff. There's um shocky gloves and more to come, but then nothing actually ever came more than just the shocky gloves. So yeah, I don't know. This one was weird. And then we get the big announcement of Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate for the Wii U, which would be releasing both simultaneously on the Wii U and the 3DS. Yes, interesting. I mean, uh, this was fine, I guess, as an overall direct for the Wii U. For 40 minutes though, I feel like it could have used a little more energy maybe. I don't know. On October 2nd of 2012, we got our first ever Nintendo Direct Mini, which would be a new thing where there are these short five minute long Nintendo Directs. This Direct is completely about new Super Mario Bros 2 for the 3DS's DLC that was coming out. That's it. Five plus minutes of just that. Okay. October 4th, another day, another Nintendo Direct. This time it was the UK version. They start things 
off showing the N64 Paper Mario game? What's this? Did the GameCube one shows up? And the Wii version? Yes! Paper Mario Sticker Star is finally getting revealed. They announced this all the way back in 2010. People were sure that they had already forgotten about it. No, here it is, finally being shown in a Nintendo Direct. It would end up releasing to generally favorable reviews on the 3DS, so it had that going for it. Oh, what's this? A new Luigi's Mansion game? Finally, after all this time? Okay. We get a reminder that Fire Emblem for the 3DS is maybe coming next year. We get another reminder that Pokemon Black and White 2 still exist on a previous generation of Nintendo DS. Okay, then they talk more about new Super Mario Bros. 2 for the 3DS's Coin Dash DLC mode or whatever. They are really pushing this. Then we get info on a new style boutique game available November 16th, okay? They talk more about some Nintendo eShop games you can play, some of the same ones we've been seeing for a while. We get an announcement for a new Professor Layton game. Then we get a little bit of talk about Crimson Shroud. We get to see some other games that are going to be coming to the eShop that you can download directly from your 3DS. And we do get to see a little bit about Shin Megami Tensei Devil Survivor Overclocked. What a name for a game. They talk a bit about Virtue's Last Reward. Virtue's Last Reward is a second game in the Zero Escape series following the acclaimed 999. I honestly don't know if I've ever heard of this game series. Am I missing something, guys? Like, something big? Is the series truly amazing? And then we hear a little bit more about Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate and how the Wii U and the 3DS can communicate so that you can continue to play between the two versions. Then on October 25th, there was another Nintendo Direct, this time from Nintendo of America, and for the most part, it's just kind of like a rehash of everything that's already been shown off in the previous Nintendo Direct, but this time featuring Reggie. We do get to see a little bit more of Fire Emblem, but the big reveal in this Direct is Animal Crossing New Leaf. And we get to get a first look at this game in a Nintendo Direct form. We had it announced a while back, but now the game was starting to actually take shape here. They did a great job actually showing off a lot of the newer features of this game and how you would be a mayor and you could sit at the mayor desk. I mean, that was kind of the big pull of this game, right? I think this is right here, the era where we started to see a shift for Nintendo, where at the very least, while the Wii U would struggle after its launch, the 3DS would start to get on an up and up here. Animal Crossing New Leaf being around the corner ready for release was a really big deal. Maybe it was finally time for people to start thinking about picking up a 3DS because games were starting to roll out onto it. I don't know what they were doing the first two years at the 3DS. It's like they didn't know that they, you know, had to make games for their system, but hey, the games are coming. Then man, what an action-packed fall 2012 was because there was another Nintendo Direct just a month later, November 27th, 2012. Well, this one was another Nintendo Direct Mini, but what could they be talking about this time? Maybe some exclusive information about Animal Crossing or something? No, it was just more talk about DLC for new Super Mario Bros. 2. What are they doing? Did they just put like all of their stock in hoping that this one specific game was successful? I mean, cool, we get it, Nintendo. You guys figured out DLC. Can we move on? I'm not even hating on new Super Mario Bros. 2. It's fine. I just think it's funny how much time they were dedicating to trying to market this DLC. Then we get to the December 5th, 2012 Direct. Another Direct. And this time they have Satoru Iwata as a Lego character talking about the new Lego game. Honestly, it was a kind of a neat idea for a game. I don't know how many people were like, I need to buy a Wii U just to experience this though. But I mean, it was a cool game, I guess. Back at E3 in 2012, they announced Pikmin 3. So for the first time ever, we kind of got a little presentation on Pikmin 3. And now we see Nintendo continue to um, dig their grave a little bit deeper when it comes to the Wii U. They announced Wii Fit U, the sequel to Wii Fit. That thing that was a really, really big fad. And then all of a sudden, all the Wii U balance boards just showed up at your local Goodwill randomly for an overpriced amount of money to buy. I think if Nintendo realized that the drop off rate for Wii Fit users was as big as it was, they probably wouldn't have thought that they would hit gold twice and do Wii Fit U, but they must not have paid attention because they did it anyways. They announced this panorama thing for the Wii U and you can, I don't know, like watch videos on your Wii U gamepad and have like this makeshift Google Maps experience. They even got Iwata wearing this special camera helmet so he can walk around and create an environment for players to experience of a hotel in Hawaii. I it's cool. I mean, Iwata's a gem. Like, you can't get mad at this, but like, what is this? We finally get to see some gameplay for Luigi's Mansion 2 Dark Moon, which did look like a pretty awesome experience. Then in the same direct as the Wii Fit direct, they decided to bring Brain Age back because that definitely wasn't also a fad during the DS era. This is like the Nintendogs incident. It's like they had something really popular, so they assume that if they do more games, people will continue to buy it as crazily as they initially did. But I don't think that's always the case here. And I think games like Nintendogs, Brain Age, and Wii Fit probably uh, don't necessarily count as series that people want to continue to engage in long term. And then we get a little more talk about Fire Emblem 3DS, now called Fire Emblem Awakening, and that pretty much wraps up this Nintendo Direct as well. But 
2013 is probably going to be one of the most goofy years of Nintendo history. Because I think Nintendo was starting to realize they didn't know what they were doing. Even though I think a lot of fans were wondering if Nintendo knew what they were doing. 2013 was just a rough year for Nintendo. They, they turn it around, but well, let's, let's talk about 2013. Early 2013, Nintendo fans actually had something big to be excited for, especially if they had a 3DS or they were thinking about buying one. We're talking about the Pokemon Direct, the first ever Pokemon Direct. And what we're gonna do in this video is not necessarily go through every single Pokemon Direct. I think that'd be really fun to do for another video if this video does well enough. But this Direct was really important, so we will go through this one. While this one's only 11 minutes long, they started off showing Pokemon Red and Green, and they talk about like Link cables. Then they show Pokemon Red and Blue, and then Gold and Silver, and then Ruby and Sapphire, and Fire Red and Leaf Green, then Diamond and Pearl, and Platinum, and Black and White, and whatnot. And then they're like, but this is what's next. And then some like drums, doo -doo 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 -doo. I don't know if the drums are actually there. But then they show off Pokemon X and Y, and this is Pokemon's first ever jump to like 3D graphics. And this was massive for the Pokemon series. Remember Black and White was like still on the DS. We were having like DS Pokemon games through the first two years of the 3DS's life. Finally, by the end of the third year, we would have a 3D Pokemon adventure, which could only do well for the 3DS. I remember getting Pokemon X and Y at launch, and I was really enthralled by this game. Like, it was actually a solid Pokemon experience. I mean, there will always be people who criticize it and get into, like, the nitty-gritty details, but, you know, just for getting into a Pokemon game and having a straightforward experience, it was pretty fun. I liked the designs of the new Pokemon. I liked that they didn't, like, overhaul and remove all the old Pokemon and just have brand new ones. They had, like, a mix of old and some new ones. I liked it. But still, this was a pretty big turning point for not only Pokemon, but also for Nintendo and the 3DS line. Like I said, things are starting to finally look up. They got Animal Crossing and Pokemon coming out the same year. People will start to buy the 3DS. They just have to put the good games out. But will Nintendo strike while the iron's hot? They had another Nintendo Direct for the same month, this time talking about the Nintendo Wii U. And in retrospect, this is a little bit of a weird Direct, but at the time, it was a really, really good Nintendo Direct. I mean, they start things off slow, talking about the Miiverse. What a weird thing. They spent a lot of time talking about Virtual Console, and then they talk about, like, Pikmin, Wii Fit U. Did anybody buy that? I mean, we get to, like, the 18-minute mark, which is literally halfway through the Direct, and they're still talking about the Miiverse. Okay, then they give Wonderful 101 a little spotlight. They're like, here, here's some marketing or something. But then immediately give a behind-the-scenes for Bayonetta 2, which probably overshadowed that, but people were excited for Bayonetta 2. And then, finally, we also get some updates on Super Smash Bros, which had been announced a while back, and they're just saying they need more time to cook. Okay. Then they announce that they are working on a new 3D Mario action game for the Wii U, which is exciting. I wonder what that would be. And then they say that they're working on a new Mario Kart game. Okay, that's a big deal. They say that they're going to show the titles in playable form at E3 later this year, which is pretty good. They show some Wii U board game experience for some reason next. We see a new Yoshi games in development. Okay. And then they announce Shin Megami Tensei and Fire Emblem having a crossover. What? This is a huge moment for a lot of Nintendo fans. And then we get the announcement of the next Legend of Zelda mainline game, which would end up being Breath of the Wild, but they're just more talking in this like PowerPoint presentation style of how they're working on wanting to rethink the conventions of Zelda. Okay, I'm down for it. I don't think at this point anybody anticipated from early 2013, it would take until March of 2017 for the game to come out, but this was when it was revealed, essentially. This leads into another big announcement, which is the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, which, I mean, that's actually pretty cool. I think the game visually looked pretty decently, more or less, on the Wii U. I mean, there's some little criticisms you could make, but this specifically ended up being the game that ended up getting me to finally pull the trigger and buy a Wii U, so it was really fun. And then this one wraps up with Monolith Soft doing a pretty impressive sizzle reel about what they've been cooking up for the Wii U. So overall, I feel like this Direct was pretty solid and probably got a lot of people really excited for the Wii U and got some players, like myself, to pick up a Wii U themselves. The thing is, though, at this time, looking back at this Direct all of this time later, it does kind of show that Nintendo played their entire hand here and showed literally every single big release for the rest of the Wii U's life cycle, essentially. I don't know if that was the original plan, that that would be how long the Wii U would survive, but I mean, like, what big surprises did Nintendo have left after this? Star Fox Zero? Like, you know what I mean? There wasn't really anything else that was kept under wraps here other than, like, one or two smaller 
other like spin-off games like maybe Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors, Twilight Princess HD. I don't know. We'll keep watching the directs and see what they showcase because there were some surprises and the way that they presented things does get really interesting. So let's take a look at the rest of the Wii U era directs because the Wii U got wrapped up pretty quickly after it started. We got our first ever Animal Crossing direct next to promote Animal Crossing New Leaf and get to see more about the game and they did a great job showcasing all of the massive changes to this game to show why this game was actually different from previous entries. The previous game, Animal Crossing City Folk, did get some criticism for being too much like Wild World, but now we're the mayor, there's so much more to do in this game. One of the houses they show off is absolutely insane actually, but yeah, I don't know. I've always been fond of this Nintendo Direct, I've seen it a few times, and I think they did a good job presenting the game. Two weeks later, what would the rest of Nintendo have in store for us in their February 14th, 2013 Nintendo Direct? Let's see. Oh yeah, this is 2013, the year of Luigi. Whatever that means. I, I think it's because Luigi's Mansion's coming out, so they have other Luigi-themed things I guess we could be excited for. So they show off Luigi's Mansion 2, Dark Moon. They show off the next big thing in the year of Luigi, Mario and Luigi Dream Team. You see it's the year of Luigi because Luigi's also in the game. I think it would have been funny if they called it Luigi and Mario Dream Team. It's not that important. But yeah, they announced this game existed, so that was cool. We get some more information about Fire Emblem Awakening. They spent some time highlighting Animal Crossing New Leaf and Lego City Undercover again. We get to know that Ninja Gaiden 3 Razor's Edge is coming. And then the biggest surprising reveal, Google Street View for the Wii U, baby. Yeah, I don't know. I think in practice, maybe this uh, wasn't as cool as what they thought it would have been back in concept. I don't know a single person who actually used Google Maps on their Wii U seriously, other than maybe just downloading the app to see what was on there. We get a little bit of talk about Mario and Donkey Kong minis on the move for the Nintendo eShop. We learn about the new Castlevania, the new Monster Hunter. Somehow Nintendo secured the rights to have Need for Speed Most Wanted to release on the Wii U. They dedicated a section to the Walking Dead survival instinct. What a terrible, terrible game this was. This was like low resolution Walking Dead actors as the characters in a really poorly made stealth game. Like they showed off this game originally and I thought that the game's concept actually looked really good. However, when the game came out, it wasn't at all very good. Matter of fact, they actually moved the game's release date up closer so that they could ride off the hype of the television show even longer than what they actually were originally planned to do. But yeah, wow, that's crazy seeing this in a Nintendo Direct. I kind of forgot this game existed for a second. We then go forward to March and we got a Japanese Nintendo Direct. This one focused actually pretty heavily on Tomodachi life, which didn't come to the West yet at this time. They kind of just show off what the game was all about and that was fine for this presentation. It did look like kind of a fun game. They could have also called it Extreme Animal Crossing and I would have also accepted that title, but I digress. Tomodachi life is fine. Alrighty, then we go into April where we had another normal Western Nintendo Direct and they're talking about everything for the year of Luigi. Like more talk about Mario and Luigi Dream Team. We got this confusing trailer explaining how Mario Golf World Tour will work. We get a new Mario Party announced. I don't know why they didn't take advantage of the year of Luigi and just call it Luigi Party. They're scared of making Luigi a brand. But the big reveal, I guess, was the announcement of New Super Luigi U, which was essentially just like a standalone DLC for New Super Mario Bros U, but that was what they were saving it for. That's why they chose to wait to use Luigi's name and everything, because they wanted to reveal it right here. There were some other interesting things though, like Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, Yoshi's Island 3D. We get more talk about Pikmin 3 again, which is apparently supposed to be coming this year. We got the announcement that Earthbound was gonna be coming to the West in a localized form, which is a really exciting deal. Still no Mother 3, but I mean, it was something. We got the new WarioWare game where you have to play the mini games on your gamepad instead of on the TV, and the TV's like the second screen from the DS where you have to like look up and check what's going on there. Uh, I don't know. I feel like if I wanted to play a WarioWare game like this, I would just play on a DS, but they were still trying to get the Wii U popularized. They talk about a couple other little games, and then they wrap it up on the big, exciting edition of Shin Megami Tensei 4, which did look like a pretty cool collector's piece. And we got a Zelda announcement that was a pretty big deal. The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past was finally getting a follow-up game in the form of The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds. A Link to the Past was like one of the most beloved Zelda games of all time, besides like maybe Ocarina of Time. For at least 2D fans, this is like the GOAT. And to get a follow-up game, even if it's for the 3DS, I think some people were really, really excited about it. Okay, but Nintendo's going into hard times now because the next Direct was literally a Nintendo Direct Sega Direct. Man, what happened to the whole like back in the day rivalry? They're now buddy buddy. You almost feel bad for Sega because Sega's like, oh, this is our chance to have some games blow up because Nintendo's so successful. But then they have the deal where they have to release some Wii U exclusives and we all know how this all went. We'll go through this one really quickly because I don't know if this fully counts as Nintendo Direct and it only released in Japan, but they show off Yakuza 
is a uh, one and two HD for the Wii U. They talk about this one for a while. Then they show off another game briefly called The Cave. They announce Hatsune Miku Project Mirai 2. Awesome. We get a little bit about the new Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games before they wrap it up with a big tease for the next upcoming Sonic game, Super Sonic Galaxy. I mean, Sonic and the Lost World. Exclusive for the Wii U. They only showed off a picture though, which is a little silly, I think, for having an entire Sega Direct dedicated to it, but I digress. Back in America, the next Nintendo Direct was in May of 2013, and we got to see some more Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games, some virtual console title, we saw more Donkey Kong Country Returns 3D, and more Game & Wario. Animal Crossing New Leaf gets a mention, New Luigi U has a long, long section dedicated to it, and they also explain the differences in the prices, where you can get the DLC for $19.99, or you can get the package version with the original game for $29.99. They show off the wonderful 101, which I had already forgotten all about, and then they remind everyone that Pikmin 3 also exists. And then they're like, hey, don't worry though, there's more coming as we head to E3. I don't know what this direct was. I guess a pre-E3 direct, I guess. It was okay. All right, this brings us to Nintendo Direct and E3 2013. This was a big one. I was very excited to finally see what was going on because I had a Wii U now and I was like, the future can only go up from here. Nintendo is just going to announce some great stuff and we're going to be set. They start things off pretty strong. They show off some new stuff about Pokemon X and Y for the 3DS, which I was really excited for, a new generation of Pokemon. I really had a hard time getting into the fifth generation Pokemon Black and White games, so having X and Y now being at the forefront of things had me excited to jump back into Pokemon. They had some classic music, some old Pokemon, and new Pokemon mixed together. It was great. Okay, then there actually is a big announcement. A new 3D Mario game in the form of Super Mario 3D World, which took the art style and like stylistic perspective from Super Mario Land 3D, but now it's a world and it's on the Wii U and it's co-op. Now I know there was some people who were disappointed because they wanted more traditional 3D Mario experience, kind of like what we got with like Super Mario 64, Sunshine, Galaxy, those types of games. Something we wouldn't get until Odyssey way later, but this in its own right still was a pretty solid announcement. Something for Wii U fans to really get behind. I mean, we're pretty far into the beginning of the Wii U, and there aren't a lot of really good games that are worth picking up. And then they followed up with another heavy hitter. Mario Kart 8 first announced all the way back in Nintendo Direct E3 2013. This game would be one of the ultimate Mario Kart games to the point where when the Switch rolled out, they just re-released that thing and called it Deluxe and added a couple of things. And that's been the Mario Kart game people have been playing for 11 years now. But it all started back at this E3. Okay, they're doing good with this E3. Let's not announce anything dumb that's gonna like get people distracted or lose interest. They announce a Wii U party. Let's just pretend this one didn't happen. I mean, I never played it, and I'm sure it was fine and fun, but these aren't the games that are gonna get people hyped up about buying the console. You know, this looks like something from the Wii era. Very rightly so. Okay, they talk about the Wii Fit U thing, then they talk about other games that are coming out like Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and Batman Arkham Origins. They show a little gameplay of Sonic Lost World and like Watch Dogs. It was just like a little third party showcase they threw in the middle of their presentation. Then they spend a ton of time showing off a bunch of smaller indie games and smaller games coming to the system and it's starting to get a little boring, but there's still half of an E3 presentation to go, so maybe things will pick up. Okay, they show off more information about the Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD, which is really good to show off. They show off Wonderful 101, which I still don't know how many people knew about this game. And they finally announced Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze, a great game for the Wii U, one of my favorites, and another one that they re-released years later for the Switch that I think is still $60 to this day. Not happy about that for an 11-year-old game, but that's a whole separate issue. We get to see some real gameplay for Bayonetta 2, which is great to finally see. We get to see a cool look at possibly one of the upcoming Monolith software games. Pretty sure it was something Xenoblade related, but they never showed the logo. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But the big, big reveal. This was huge for the Wii U. No matter how bad the Wii U sold, this moment right here turned the tides for the Wii you and it is awesome it starts off with a very animal crossing theme looking game you think maybe it's an animal crossing for the wii u which would be hype but instead we see the villager open up his mailbox and inside if you look closely you can see the smash bros logo on like the envelope then we finally get the first teaser for super smash brothers for wii u and 3ds also known as smash bros 4 this was a hype trailer. Like, these trailers never go wrong. They show off the characters, they just 
get it right every time and it was solid. And then just when you're like already hyped, it cuts to the CGI trailer, it shows the characters and some mysterious character up on a cliff, and then you're like, who, who is that? And then boom, it's Mega Man? Like. Mega Man that's not a Nintendo property? We have more third-party characters showing up now? Mega Man? This was massive. And then that pretty much wraps it up other than Iwata like showing like the E3 floor or something. But yeah, a pretty solid E3 across the board. Smash Bros definitely stole the show. I think they could have trimmed down the middle section with a lot of the boring stuff and just got to the point and made it shorter, but still a fun watch. Okay, for the sake of brevity here, we are gonna start skipping the Japanese directs to avoid rehashing the same stuff that gets announced. So in the West in July, 2013, we got a direct mini, which mostly recapped what we saw at E3, but focused on the games coming out sooner than later on. They're really desperate here to show that they do have games. They even go and list Disney Pixar's planes as an upcoming Wii U game for all those Planes movie enthusiasts who just can't get enough of that film. August 7th, we saw another Nintendo Direct. This one showed off a bit of Sonic Lost World, Rayman, Pokemon Rumble U, Professor Layton, A Link Between Worlds, and of course, remember, this is Year of Luigi, so what do we get? Some Luigi Super Smash Bros. gameplay. <laughs> okay. We do get to see a little bit of Animal Crossing Plaza, which was like this weird social network hybrid based around Animal Crossing that they tried to launch for the Wii U, a system that didn't even have an Animal Crossing game on it. This was a weird choice. Two days after this, Wonderful 101 got its own direct and I don't think anybody noticed. And in September, there was a Pokemon direct, mostly talking about nostalgia of old Pokemon, Pokebank, Pokemon X and Y. I noticed there isn't too much talk about the 2DS, which also was announced around this time, but they never really bring it up too much in Nintendo directs for whatever reason, so that's something worth noting. A little over a week later, we got an entire dedicated Nintendo direct for the Wii Fit U. <laughs> All right. October 1st, we did get kind of a bigger Nintendo Nintendo Direct, with Super Mario 3D World being shown off at the forefront of things. We also get a big section dedicated to Wii U Party, once again a game I forgot even existed. Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze gets some more highlight spots here, a little bit of rehashing, but the big thing that was shown off here was some new Kirby 3DS gameplay, which actually looked pretty promising. There's also um, some talks about Skylanders Switch Force and some Bravery Default coverage as well. Going into November, the Nintendo Direct actually started out with this comedic sketch. I don't know what this is. We need to get a move on with this Nintendo Direct. But this, this is an elevator. Yes, I have that power. You cannot escape me. We get more talk about The Legend of Zelda A Link Between Worlds, we get a shiny new Zelda 3DS shown off which looks pretty neat, and we also get a look at Mario Party Island Tour. Cool. YouTube gets announced to have an update on its app which is, you know, uh, special for all those YouTube watchers on their 3DS and Wii U, and then we see some more Super Mario 3D World again, and there's apparently this Luigi Brothers bonus game because don't forget, it's the year of Luigi baby! And then weirdly after this direct before the next direct, Direct. There was a special direct dedicated to the Louvre in France, like that famous museum, and it's just uh, Miyamoto and Iwata walking around a museum with the 3DS and headphones on, and it's weirdly kind of adorable. A uh, pretty unique piece in Nintendo history. Okay, December 18th, we get another direct, this time with a little bit of gameplay of Legend of Zelda Hyrule Warriors, though the name was not final at that time. We do get a name for Kirby's 3D adventure, which is called Kirby Triple Deluxe, and we get to see a little bit about Kirby Fighters and DDD's drum whatever this is. Oh, Yoshi's New Island gets a little bit of talk. Chibi Robo, the biggest game of the century, finally gets a little spotlight in a Nintendo Direct. A lot of recap on things we've seen in other Directs are here, but there was a little bit of talk about Donkey Kong Tropical Freeze because there's a lot of speculation for a long time as to who one of the playable characters would be, and finally in this Direct it was revealed that it was, of course, Cranky Kong who would be playable in this new Donkey Kong Country game. They also showed off a Sonic tie-in for Lost World, which goes with the Yoshi's Island game, which is kind of weird. Like, what is this? Wii Sports Club? Let's go? I really liked Wii Sports on the Wii. What is this? Wait, this doesn't seem normal. A 24-hour trial? What is this? We can't just buy the game. We have to join, like, an actual sports club with a membership? W why? This is like a worse version of the Wii Sports experience we got on the Wii for free, as that was a game that came with most consoles. Oh, also, we're in December, and it's a last second Year of Luigi thing. There's some news here. Dr. Luigi, a reskin of Dr. Mario, pretty much, but with Luigi is coming out, so get hyped about that. Okay, 
Okay, they turn things around with this direct though. There is a big reveal to wrap things up. They show off what looks like Mario Kart footage, but what's going on here? Kirby's here? Could this be? Yes, this is Smash Bros, not Mario Kart. Kirby wins, and then a star comes out of nowhere, and it's not Starfy, it's actually Luna from Super Mario Galaxy and Rosalina. These are characters in Smash Bros being announced right here, right now. And it was really hyped to see these characters being added to the roster. I mean, there was always a lot of hype about these reveals. It was a good way to close out the year. Smash Bros was literally one of the best highlights during the Wii U Dark Ages. So at least Nintendo took advantage of that. Also, they showed off like this Mario Kart 8 airplane map, in case you're wondering. 2014's interesting. They actually cut down the total number of directs significantly to an extent, but there still was very calculated choices made in what they wanted to do this year. Going into 2014, February 14th would mark our very first Nintendo Direct in quite some time, and we get the immediate announcement that Little Mac is announced for Super Smash Bros for Wii U and 3DS, so that's really exciting. We got more info on Mario Golf World Tour and Kirby Triple Deluxe and Yoshi's New Island. We see gameplay for Steel Divers Sub Wars, which is interesting. This game shows like a crossover with Star Fox, which I find really weird, but it isn't the only only weird thing they end up doing with Star Fox in this era, so we'll just have to buckle up and be ready for that. Rusty's Real Deal Baseball has some ways you can actually earn real games by playing this game. It's a cooler concept than what Nintendo does it justice in explaining here, but I've seen videos of people playing this game and it's actually pretty cool the way that like, the whole like haggling mechanic to pay less to get games worked in this. We get a reveal of Pokemon Battle Troze, who was asking for this, Professor Layton, Monster Hunter 4 get mentions, and we get gameplay for the next Mon Monolith title and more Bayonetta 2 stuff to, you know, wrap this up. Pretty cool. We get to April 8th and we have a Nintendo Smash only direct, a dedicated direct just for Super Smash Bros. This is the first news that we get about this game and it showed that the game would be releasing on the 3DS the summer of 2014 and the Wii U a few months later. A little weird to split up the releases, but okay. They show some stats of how the games will perform, like the 3DS version will run at 60 FPS even if you have 3D on. They show that the game Games will have the same roster of characters, but different stages between the versions. They show off some of the stages. In this deep direct, we learn about, you know, the rankings modes and the online modes and bands and assist trophies and whatnot. We get a breakdown of some of the newer characters that were previously announced, and we find out that Charizard is joining up in this game without the trainer, just by himself, but then there's another surprise fake out. Greninja is also set to appear in this game too. They obviously were already announcing other big name characters that were going to be showing up in the Smash Bros. outside of the directs, so this was once again another really big and exciting moment. But after this Nintendo Direct, how would they follow that up with another good Nintendo Direct? Well, as it would turn out, there would be another Direct in just two days. What? It was a dedicated Tomodachi Life English Nintendo Direct. Okay. This game gets like an 11 minute spotlight, which probably did sell some people the game. I never fully played through a Tomodachi Life game, so um, I don't know how I feel about this. But yeah, it was something that they did. A dedicated presentation just for that one game. But then, just a couple of more days later, we get another 40 minute direct on Mario Kart 8, which shows off a ton of stuff like kart customization, tracks, and characters. But now it's really time for Nintendo to start stepping things up. The Wii U still wasn't doing that well. The 3DS was starting to pick up. Nintendo's probably at crossroads debating how much longer they can continue to support the Wii U before they can cut ties and just launch a different console, but they don't want to burn their entire fan base either. So E3 2014 had a lot riding on it. So to start things off, we get Nintendo teaming up with Robot Chicken? What? What is this combo? Robot Chicken is like typically associated with like a show that adults watch, not a family friendly show like what Nintendo is typically known for doing. We get the announcement of Amiibos for the first time, which is a pretty big deal. We learn about like the Smash Bros connectivity, Me Fighters in action, Yoshi's Woolly World gets formally announced, Captain Toad is getting his own game in the form of Captain Toad's Treasure Tracker. It's essentially like the little Toad mini game from Super Mario 3D World, except a spin off for its own full game experience. There are a couple of of interesting robot chicken bits in here. There's an interview with Eiji Anuma about the next Nintendo game. Hype starts building up here because this is a big deal. A lot of people wanted to know what the Wii U was gonna bring out with Zelda. And then for the first time ever, we get a reveal as to what Zelda on the Wii U will actually look like. And I'll be honest, when they showed this off back in the day, I wasn't really that impressed. I felt like it looked a little too stylistic. I was expecting something more Twilight Princess-esque, maybe something like what they actually showed off for the Wii U when they announced it, that game 
gameplay demo. I wouldn't keep this opinion later on, mind you. This was just like my first impression with this first trailer. My opinion would shift dramatically before the release of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Then for a while, there had been a lot of speculation that Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire were getting a remake, and we finally got the official confirmation of that, and we got to see some more Bayonetta 2 stuff with the big reveal that Bayonetta 2 would be coming out bundled with Bayonetta 1, so new players could enter the series. They show off a bit more about Zelda Hyrule Warriors, we get to see Kirby and the Rainbow Curse showcased, which is kind of a neat looking game, and we finally get to see what that monolith game was that totally was always Xenoblade Chronicles X, but it's officially revealed in this cool looking trailer. We get to see the announcement of Mario Maker, which was actually a really, really big deal. It was a cool concept and a lot of people were hyped to give this game a try. And then for the first time ever, we saw the birth of a game that goes into development every time Animal Crossing gets abandoned by Nintendo, Splatoon. A brand new IP third person shooter that is quite a bit different than what we see in the shooter genre anyways. And the art style is pretty charming, much like a lot of Nintendo's other properties. This was just the big reveal, but this would be a landmark series for the next 10 years of Nintendo. We then get a little bit more about Super Smash Bros. We get a little anime trailer, which essentially sets up Paul Utina into being a new Smash Bros. character for the first time, expanding more of the Kid Icarus universe out. And then at the very end of this presentation, Miyamoto's talking about how they have other games planned, and in the background, you can see what is essentially Star Fox, which I was so hyped that Star Fox had gotten announced. There was outlets reporting on the story already, saying that Star Fox was shown off in a closed door setting for some journalists, which meant there was something there. And I was so excited. I remember talking to my friends about this. It had been so many years since there was a main Star Fox game. How are they gonna tell the story? How are they gonna do this? I didn't care. I just was so excited to get to finally see my favorite series as a kid reunited on Nintendo the way that it should have been years ago. I was setting my expectations up way, way higher than I should have ever. This was a decent E3, maybe not their best E3 ever, but it definitely was a step in the right direction. Now, the next main direct that they would do after this would mostly be tied to specific games that were upcoming. So they did like a direct based on certain games. However, the first main direct that wasn't tied to an exclusive game wouldn't be until November, and it starts off pretty strong. Bam! <laughs> The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask 3D, a game that a lot of people wanted, especially after Ocarina of Time already was ported over to the 3DS. Majora's Mask always seems to be like the black sheep in how it's treated sometimes by Nintendo, but for it to finally be included was kind of a cool thing to see, and the lore and deep dark backstory behind that version of the game is really, really incredible. We even get a Nintendo Direct just about Super Smash Bros for the Wii U release this time, where it shows a lot of the content, including the announcement of Mewtwo returning since Melee as an upcoming DLC character, which was huge. As we reach the end of 2014, we do get to see a little bit more about Kirby and the Rainbow Curse, we see more about Amiibo Cross compatibility, and even Duck Hunt gets a pretty cool mention here. Also, Persona Q was announced, which as a Nintendo fan, a lot of people never experienced Persona games, but now, knowing what I know now that I've played a Persona game, I really wish I would have paid more attention back in the day, because I think I really would have liked Persona Q, a game that was like a big crossover between two of the biggest Persona stories in franchise history. It brought characters from Persona 3 and Persona 4 together, and it was just a really cool concept. Also, we hear a little bit about Sonic Boom's demo coming to the 3DS. Uh-oh. Now, Sonic Boom, some of you may remember, was an announced Wii U exclusive game that, uh, ooh, I don't even know what to explain it as. They were trying to restart the series, and they took some creative liberties and made a really, really broken game. <laughs> And we don't hear about it too, too much in these directs, so whenever we get a reference to it, it definitely is a rare example. Okay, 2015. Super Smash Bros. is out there now. How do they keep Nintendo afloat? How do they keep people interested in Wii U in 2015? It's a uphill battle at this point. Let's go to the beginning of 2015 with the first Nintendo Direct in January 2014, which started off with a pretty cool Fire Emblem reveal. We see some stuff for puzzles and dragons and... Mario? Pokemon Shuffle, oh yeah. This is a game that existed. Nintendo shows off some more Smash Bros. Amiibos. Mario Party 10 
actually ends up getting its announcement, and we learn about Hyrule Warriors DLC coming out called Tingle and Young Link. Along the way, there were a few other games announced like Etrian Mystery Dungeon, Story of Seasons, Fossil Fighters Frontier, the new Nintendo 3DS was shown off, we get Codename S-T-E-A-M or Steam, Ace Combat Assault Horizon Legacy Plus, what a wordful, Xenoblades Chronicle 3D, Ironfall, and Monster Hunter 4 Ultimate were all also shown off. Before we would get another Nintendo Direct, we did get news that the new Legend of Zelda game would end up getting delayed, unfortunately. People weren't too happy about it, but I think by the time the game would finally release, people understood that the delay was probably necessary. The game ended up being really good. So we would get our next Direct officially in April, and it opens up with Satoru Iwata talking about Super Smash Bros and Mewtwo, and then Lucas gets announced, which is pretty hype. There's a lot of love and attention in this Direct to Super Mario Maker, and it revealed some cool concepts as to what the community could make and come up with. Mario Kart was getting an update that was going to add a faster 200cc mode, and there was more coverage of other games that were already shown off. Shin Megami X Fire Emblem crossover game gets attention, but we don't know anything about that, if this will even become a thing. We get a horror game on the Wii U in the form of Fatal Frame. I guess that's neat. Then we get the announcement for Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer, a spin-off Animal Crossing game where you get to design villagers' houses. It was a cool concept, though I felt like this game would have done better if it was more of an add-on to a main game rather than its own standalone game, something Nintendo would probably take note on later on. Over the course of the next few months, we would see Splatoon and Xenoblade Chronicles getting their own directs. We would get the first ever Nintendo Direct Micro? Uh, it's still longer than the first ever Nintendo Direct, which I find kind of funny, and everyone's tiny because... I don't know, they're talking about Chibi Robo Park Patrol. We get Dr. Mario Miracle Cure for the 3DS. It's not Dr. Luigi. The year of Luigi is over. Goodbye, Luigi. Rest in peace. Then we get the reveal for Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon for the 3DS. Oh my god, let's go, guys. I'm hyped about this one. They show off some Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games. Some other stuff that's not really new. Some game called Project Treasures gets announced. I don't even know what this is. Oh, and we get the announcement that the Nintendo World Championship is coming back for the first time since the 80s? I actually remember being hyped for this and enjoyed watching it. It was a cool competition, I guess. Uh, there are some goofy moments for sure, but it was cool to see the mix of real competitive players, casuals, and influencers compete with each other. A little bit later, we would get a Super Smash Bros. Direct, and we got some more DLC characters announced, Roy and Ryu officially announced for Smash Bros. But then it was time for E3, 2015. A big year for Nintendo. They have a lot to prove. Why should people buy a Wii U at this point? The Wii U's, uh, doing some weird stuff, I guess. Now, we already knew that Star Fox was probably going to be revealed, likely, so at E3 2015, they just leaned right into that directly, doing a puppet-themed Nintendo Direct, inspired by, you know, the puppet styles that the original Star Fox games used for the Super Nintendo with the little figures that looked like this for the promo art. I mean, this was kind of fun. We had the big three at Nintendo in puppet form. You know, we have, like, Reggie, Iwata, and Miyamoto. We then go to the Kyoto Inari Shrine, and we learn about some of the inspiration for Star Fox, and that's talked about the presentation. And it's actually interesting because the thought behind making the Star Fox game was pretty cool, how they went back to the roots and had all this inspiration. It's just too bad that the game ended up being like, you know, kind of eh, like a real mid-level game that wasn't like breathtaking for newer players. It was an okay game for Star Fox fans, maybe. There is a lot of talk about Amiibo, also Bowser and Donkey Kong with like Diddy Kong also were showing up in Skylanders with their Amiibo in vehicles. We get the announcement of a game called Triforce Heroes, which is interesting because it notes this weird push Nintendo is doing here for co-op experiences on the 3DS. You'll see what I mean. This looks cool. I don't know how accessible this will be for a lot of players to have friends who also have Triforce Heroes to go on this co-op Zelda quest together, but okay. Then they announced Metroid Prime Federation Force with Blast Ball? Okay, what exactly is this? This is confusing because most fans of Nintendo and Metroid thought that Metroid Prime was long finished after the third Metroid Prime game. We even got another Metroid game unrelated to the Prime series later called Other M for the Wii. So Metroid was dead, but now we have a new Metroid Prime game that's a spinoff unrelated to the other Metroid Prime games, but still called Metroid Prime. 
And it's another co-op game, which once again, who's playing co-op on a 3DS? We get to see a little bit more about the Shin Megami Fire Emblem crossover. We see something about Fire Emblem Fates. We see even more about Xenoblade Chronicles X again. We see Isabel swimming in Mario Maker. And then Nook Happy Home Designer stuff. We gotta get that game sold more on the 3DS. Then finally, on the Wii U, we see something Animal Crossing related. Fans of Animal Crossing everywhere are hyped. We're getting a new Animal Crossing game as Animal Crossing typically releases on every single console Nintendo releases. And it's a fake out. It's a game called Amiibo Festival. It's not an Animal Crossing game, it's a board game that uh, plays like a much, much worse version of Mario Party. Uh, this was a terrible decision, and I think even the most hardcore Animal Crossing fans realized that this game wasn't what most fans wanted. Then we get to see some of Yoshi's Woolly World. We see Mario and Luigi Paper Jam. I don't know if this game actually ended up being good. I never played this one. And then we get to see a little bit of Mario Tennis Ultra Smash. Ultimately, I think Nintendo still did okay with this E3. They didn't really reveal anything massive, massive for the future, but not having Zelda to lean on kind of threw a wrench in a lot of their plans. Still, it had that classic Nintendo charm to it. Not too long after 2015's E3, the Nintendo fan base and community and the gaming industry as a whole would be rocked by the news that Satoru Iwata, president of Nintendo, sadly passed away. This was kind of out of nowhere for most people, and he had a lot of respect in the gaming community just because of how he had influenced Nintendo through his leadership. He'd been at Nintendo for a very long time. He led Nintendo through their biggest, most successful time through the Nintendo Wii era, and it was a shame that he never Never got to witness firsthand the major comeback that Nintendo as a brand would make with the upcoming success that the Switch would be, which at the time of his passing was less than two years away from releasing. He was definitely behind the scenes during all of those prototyping phases early on for the Nintendo Switch, and it's very likely that a lot of his leadership directly led to the success of the Nintendo Switch. But with all that being said, where would Nintendo go from there? We wouldn't get a lot of Nintendo Directs for a while, but by the time a few months had passed, we did get a little bit of of new content announced. We got Twilight Princess HD coming for the Wii U, which was pretty big, and there was some small talk about how the amiibo could be used in the new Zelda game also for the Wii U. We got more talk about Triforce Heroes. We learned a bit about Super Mystery Dungeon. There'd be more content for Splatoon, like cosmetics and maps coming up in the future. They also really wanted you to get Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. We get some talk about other games that had already been announced for a while. Pokémon Tournament ended up getting announced, which was really cool. And then there were some other smaller games announced, but the big reveal here was that Cloud was coming to Super Smash Bros. And that was pretty hype. They also announced that a new Smash Direct would be coming within a month. In this last Direct of 2015, the Smash Bros. Direct, they essentially explained that Smash Bros.'s support and development would be wrapping up after these new characters were added to the game as DLC. But we got the announcement of Corrin and Bayonetta coming to Smash Bros. 2016 is an interesting year. It was the year that uh, they were kind of already planning to wrap up the Wii U. Like they knew Nintendo Switch was coming, but they still needed to like move some stuff around and they unexpectedly would see a ton of success in the summer with Pokemon Go and Pokemon was just like being super popular again. So we'll kind of see how 2016 ends up playing out a little bit and what that meant for 2017. Going into early 2016, things would be pretty sparse with Nintendo Directs. Early on in the year, we did get the announcement of new Pokemon games in the form of Pokemon Sun and Moon. We didn't get any gameplay or anything, just kind of like, trust me, bro, with the games being worked on type things. We got a Direct in March of 2016, which was actually just a lot of rehashes of things that were on the 3DS already. And then E3 time comes and Nintendo opted into doing their presentation not in the Nintendo direct format, which is kind of uncommon. I mean, directs during E3 time seemed regular, but this time around we didn't see that. So a lot of things didn't end up getting revealed in Nintendo Direct, but instead were announced in the E3 presentation, which makes things a whole lot more interesting when you jump ahead when watching these directs back to September and you're like, typically they just rehash stuff and now there's all these new games that if you didn't watch the direct, you didn't know about. It was actually really refreshing, so that's good. We get to see a little bit about Mario Sports Superstars, Pokemon Sun and Moon 
is like all of the hype, especially after that summer of Pokemon Go being so successful, we find out that Super Mario Maker is coming for the 3DS, Mario Party Star Rush is a thing, and then we hear about Yoshi Woolly World for the 3DS a little more, and Hey Pikmin, a 3DS Pikmin game. November 2016, we get another Nintendo Direct, a welcome amiibo update for Animal Crossing, which is pretty big. This update was amazing for Animal Crossing. Not too often do you hear about games that are years old getting a massive content update, but hey, Animal Crossing New Leaf was a good game. It deserved the update, and there was all this other stuff going on on the Wii U. They might as well continue to support it. There are a couple of cursed moments in this Direct, I'll be honest, and there were some really cool things too. Some of the new content they're adding was awesome, but also there's some Nintendo crossovers that they added, like Legend of Zelda or Splatoon. I don't know. I really liked it. I thought that this was a really positive an update for the game. And that'd actually mostly be it for the rest of the year when it came to Nintendo Directs. In October of 2016, they would announce the Nintendo Switch in like a little teaser trailer, but that wasn't a Nintendo Direct. And then later on, they did a big Nintendo Switch reveal event that also was not a Nintendo Direct, but it was its own thing. The reveal was pretty incredible. They showed off a lot of big things coming for Nintendo Switch. I mean, Mario Odyssey, The Legend of Zelda, Splatoon 2. These are big heavy hitters and there's more to come obviously. 2017, the year of the Nintendo Switch, and we're not going to really see anything about Wii U pretty much ever again, I think. They were ready to just like let that leave, and everything in the future was Nintendo Switch. And they kept the 3DS alive too, because I think the 3DS was like their backup plan if the Switch ended up bombing too. Uh, they, they, they couldn't fully kill off the 3DS just yet, because it was moderately successful. Also in 2017, we did get a Fire Emblem Direct, directly, just for Fire Emblem. We get to learn about Fire Emblem Echoes, we get to know about Fire Emblem Warriors, kind of like the Dynasty Warriors or Hyrule Warriors, but this time Fire Emblem related. And then a big part of the Direct was dedicated to Fire Emblem Heroes, a Fire Emblem mobile gacha game that is still pretty successful to this day. In February, we get the Nintendo Switch Nindies Showcase, where they talk about games like Shovel Knight, Ukulele, Snake Pass, and Stardew Valley, and in March, it was the big release of the Nintendo Switch. So from here on out, the Switch is now officially out, and what's Nintendo gonna do moving forward? Well, firstly, never mention the Wii U again, pretty much, but they still keep the 3DS alive on life support for a little while. April, we get to know about Monster Hunter stories. We see Kirby Blowout Blast and Team Kirby Clash Deluxe. ARMS gets a pretty big focus, which is insane. A new IP from Nintendo again. They're obviously trying to ride off of the successful IP launch that they just did with Splatoon, and maybe ARMS will be just just as big as a hit. You can tell they put a lot of budget into planning how they wanted to present this game and how they were going to design their characters to hopefully kind of have another major massive franchise on their hands. We get to see Sonic Forces, Neat, Sonic Mania, which is actually a really cool game, also coming to the Switch. Some weird choices come to the Switch as well, like Payday 2, which in no way was a good version of the game. It was like really, really like hard to operate and like how do you even do voice chat on the Nintendo Switch? Like this is still a questionable thing years later. And then of course there's a lot of hype about Splatoon. Too. They followed up all of this in May with another ARMS Direct, just focus on ARMS, so we got to see even more about the game. But uh, man, I don't think ARMS ended up being the big punch out thing that Nintendo was expecting it to be. I think ARMS was fun for a little while maybe for those who bought it, but it ended up to a lot of players just being like a glorified Wii Sports boxing match with longer ARMS. In June we get a another Pokemon Direct, this time they were talking about Pokemon Tournament for the Switch, Ultra Sun, and Ultra Moon. Yeehaw there! Keep riding that Pokemon Go hype. Then we get a Splatoon 2 Direct, which is even more Splatoon stuff. Uh, they're showing the big improvements from the first Splatoon game, and this time it's on the Switch, and more people have the Switch. Or we're gonna have the Switch than the Wii U, obviously, so they have to reintroduce the game to new people. Okay, then E3 2017 once again was not a Direct, but it was a big year for Nintendo. They showed off a new Kirby game, they showed off more of Mario Odyssey, Xenoblade Chronicles 2 was a big deal. We also found out that Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild DLC Expansion Pass was coming, and Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle. What? Ubisoft is getting to use the Mario characters? And why are the rabbits here? Okay. Rocket League was coming to the Switch, which was something I really, really wanted, and I didn't know if it would even be possible if the Switch would be powerful enough. Sure enough, it of course was. And then Metroid Prime 4. That was like the biggest announcement. Metroid Prime was unfinished. They were going to revive it from the Trilogy Plus Federation Force and do a brand new game. And it would be coming out sometime soon at least because they're showing it off. We're still waiting for it. After that, we got a little Nindies 
showcase once again. I'm not a huge fan of the indie nindie showcase things. I don't know. There's sometimes a good game here and there, but a lot of the times the filler games aren't really that great, especially for the prices that sometimes are initially listed as. Okay, we get a September Direct with more Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. We learn about the Pokeball Edition new Nintendo 2DS XL, okay? Mario and Luigi Superstar Saga plus Bowser's Minions. I've never played this game. I don't know if it actually turned out to be good, so if you played it, let me know if it was actually good. It had to have been good, right? Kirby Battle Royale, and it's not the type of Battle Royale you wish it would be. There's a couple other things that get shown off at this Direct. Yokai Watch 2, Layton Mystery Journey, LA Noir. okay? Minecraft for Nintendo 3DS Family of Systems. About time. I wonder how that game holds up nowadays. Uh, Mario Party The Top 100. Really cool idea. Take Mario Party, get the best 100 mini games, and bam! Make a Mario Party game with them. Easy win. And then we get something Metroid related. And it's not Metroid Prime 4. Metroid Samus Returns. A uh, pretty cool 3DS game. Probably the biggest 3DS game to release at this time. They were trying to keep the DS alive, I think, as like this backup plan in case the Switch ended up bombing really hard and they wanted to like continue to have the DS to rely on just in case. So they didn't want to kill it off just yet. And I think this game was the answer to that. It also may have resulted in a couple of fan projects that people were working on getting legal takedown requests sent to them because Nintendo wanted to release Metroid Samus Returns. Yeah, I think people like this one who still were playing on the 3DS. I think around this point, I was already committed to the Nintendo Switch. I was ready to retire my DS. So I, I wasn't really too excited about the DS stuff coming out. But I mean, it was cool for those who were still holding on. And then of course they talk about ARMS, Splatoon. There's some more hype about Mario Odyssey. They did like a huge thing about Mario Odyssey where they showed gameplay. It was a pretty big deal. Then in October, we get a Nintendo Direct dedicated to Animal Crossing. <gasps> Pocket Camp. Still no mainline Animal Crossing game. We've been wanting it for a long time, a long, long time, but uh, we get a mobile game. I was hoping this would play a little bit more like the real games, but instead it had kind of some weird crafting wait times associated it when the game actually did come out. And I think it turned a lot of people off from this game. They did fix it substantially over time. They added a ton of content. This game still gets a lot of support. It just never really felt like the full-fledged Animal Crossing game I want to play. I feel like even the newer Animal Crossing games still aren't like fully hitting their stride with like the amount and type of content they can have and the mobile game that has even less content in some regards you know it doesn't compare but there are some great ideas that Pocket Camp has that the other Animal Crossing games never got so I don't know to each their own I do think that this is probably one of the better Nintendo mobile games that's out there and then in November we got a direct all about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 this was like Nintendo's big holiday release game so uh here's a direct about it 2008 18 is interesting because now the Switch had been successful and they're ready to wrap things up for the 3DS and move into different directions. They had a couple of things they had to finish out first, but yeah, 2018 is an interesting time for Nintendo because now it's like they, they hit the ground running with the Switch. What do they do from there? Okay, going into 2018, we get a direct mini right away in January, which has some interesting things announced like Pokémon Tournament DX DLC, Kirby Star Allies, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition, Mario Tennis Aces, Super Mario Odyssey was getting an update with Luigi's Balloon World, Celeste, Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze for Nintendo, Switch and Dark Souls Remastered randomly coming on the Switch, okay. In 2018, we get a full Nintendo Direct and there was some stuff for Nintendo 3DS talked about a bit. They wanted to remind everybody that uh, Luigi's Mansion still is a thing. You can play Luigi's Mansion on the 3DS. Detective Pikachu is a thing that has amiibo support. We get a little bit of talk about Octopath Traveler, Dark Souls Remastered with amiibo support. Don't forget guys, amiibo is a thing. Mario Tennis Aces, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker is now coming to the Switch. Undertale is coming to the Switch and that was a game everybody was talking about for like a minute and now I don't feel like anyone talks about that game anymore. They talk about doing some ARMS global test punches and Splatoon getting some expansions, pretty significant ones too. But just at the end of this reveal, we see some more Splatoon stuff and you're led to think it's another big expansion or maybe Splatoon 3. And instead, what is that? In the eye, the logo of Super Smash Brothers. Yes, Super Smash Brothers officially announced for Nintendo Switch. Not a lot of details, but we're back in the season of Smash Brothers once again. They would then go and do another Nindies showcase, which would actually be the last Nindies showcase ever. They just stopped doing Nindies showcase after this. They renamed it to something different. And then we go into E3 2018. Now, Nintendo E3 2018, it goes hard. 
Yeah, they started off showing off Damon Machina before the Nintendo logo even was shown, which was a cool choice. We see more about Xenoblade Chronicles 2 and what's coming up with that. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee with a Pokeball Plus that gives you Mew, and they talk about it having co-op mode, which was a pretty poor co-op mode, actually. Pokemon still hasn't nailed co-op, and I feel like it's something that shouldn't be too hard, but for some reason, every time co-op's implemented in Pokemon, it never works the way that you would want to work. You just can't do stuff in co-op a lot of the times, or the scaling's all off, or you have to share Pokemon. It's just, I don't know what they're doing. Okay, Super Mario Party. It's getting hard to keep track with how many Mario Party games there are, but here we are. Fire Emblem Three Houses. Fortnite is coming. Let's go. I can't wait to drop off the battle bus and meet some of you on the battlefield in Fortnite. They show off some other cool smaller games, some side-scrolling games, some cool things like Hollow Knight. We see Octopath Traveler, Just Dance, you know, the usual stuff. But this is what I love. This Nintendo Direct is 42 minutes total in length. And we're only like 18 minutes in at this point, and we got Masahiro Sakurai on the screen talking about Smash, and Super Smash Bros. literally is just the rest of the Direct. They dedicated everything after the 18 minute mark all the way through the 42 minute mark just to Super Smash Bros. They came to E3 this year confident that they're like, all we need to talk about is Smash Bros. and we're fine. And they kind of were right. They played this really cool trailer where it starts to show off the characters that are gonna be in the game. You know, we see Ice Climbers, which are back again after they were cut out of the last Smash Bros game because they couldn't get the Ice Climber characters to function well in the 3DS and they wanted the same roster on both games. So no Ice Climbers, but now they're back. We see new characters from the tease they did a little bit a while ago, like with the Inklings. We see Ivysaur and Squirtle reunited with Charizard as the Pokemon trainer again as a character. Then they show some of the DLC characters from Smash 4 that were really hyped about, but then... Everyone is here is the tagline that they go with for promoting this game. And Snake was the perfect character to show that with everyone being here because Snake hadn't been in the game since Super Smash Bros. Brawl. Like he missed that whole last Smash Bros. game because Nintendo doesn't necessarily own the rights to the character and they have to get permission and there's a bunch of paperwork. Third party characters are always up in the air if they're actually gonna come back or not. And then they go through showing off the rest of the characters that are gonna be in the game. Bam, Pichu's back, Roy's back, Dr. Mario, Toon Link and Young Link together, Wolf is back. This is a crazy trailer. It is incredible. Incredible. We then get a long direct about all the characters and their abilities and what to expect from Smash. And then after all of that, we get one last character reveal, Ridley. This is a character that people didn't even think would be possible in Smash Bros because of how large a character is, yet they made it work here in a decent way. And this Smash Bros is looking to be the ultimate Smash Bros experience. So after that crazy E3, what would Nintendo come up with next? Uh, well, we got a direct just for the game Dragalia Lost, another mobile game from Nintendo's mobile effort. This game was interesting. A lot of people really liked it, and then uh, it wasn't as popular, and it got shut down. Rest in peace. But the big news would come when September rolled around, and they did a big September Direct, starting things off right away with BAM! Luigi's Mansion 3 announced. Okay, Nintendo, you're you're doing something. They also show Kirby Extra Epic Yarn for 3DS, Luigi Mansion 1 coming to the 3DS. They did updates for Splatoon 2. We saw some stuff about Mario Tennis Aces getting an update. New Super Mario Bros. U! Deluxe. It's just like New Super Mario Bros. U, but Deluxer and for the Switch. Nintendo announced the Nintendo Switch Online functionality, and they're like, hey, here's some NES controllers. Obviously, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee were kind of a big talking point for like less than a minute. We saw Super Mario Party, something called Town, which was a working title. More Damon X Machina. Yoshi's Crafted World was shown off. There was a bunch of things shown off here. Civilization VI for the Switch. Starlink Battle for Atlas with its little Star Fox crossover. They're just trying to get like one last little push for Star Fox and it didn't end up going well for that franchise. There's a bunch of other games announced to come to Nintendo Switch like Warframe, Just Dance, Team Sonic Racing. There was a couple of Final Fantasy things talked about. Then we see a Super Smash Bros. Ultimate bundle and another massive announcement. Isabelle is coming to Super Smash Bros. from Animal Crossing. This was actually really hype and a little bittersweet because at first everyone was like, like, oh, this is it. This is the new Animal Crossing game. We're getting an Animal Crossing game for the Switch. And then they're like, uh-uh, it's Smash Bros, actually, which was still hype. Everyone's like, oh, it's Smash Bros. But then, like, the Animal Crossing fans are like, well, I mean, that's cool, but we wanted a new game. But then, at the end of the reveal of the Smash Bros introduction of Isabel, bam, they announced that Animal Crossing will be coming to Nintendo Switch sometime in the future. All right. By November, we had another Smash Direct. We already were starting to know a couple of the characters from other presentations that they had done. So, like, we knew about Isabel Ridley, King K. Rool. 
Rule and some other characters, but this time it was revealed that Ken from Street Fighter and Incineroar from Pokemon Sun and Moon were going to be added into the mix. And there was also a reveal of game mechanics, how things like items would work, and what the whole fighter's pass would end up looking like. We also found out about Piranha Plant being like a special character. I think it was a pre-order character. And then we get a crazy cinematic for this hybrid story type mode, like the game mode type thing that replaced like the Subspace Emissary from back in the day. It's like the whole spirit quest line that you do in the game. And then we get this really cool cutscene where everyone gets vaporized. It was awesome. 2019, February. Boom, new direct Super Mario Maker 2. Incredible. Also earlier on, they had announced that Joker from Persona 5 would be coming to Super Smash Bros. And they announced that in the spring update for the game, he would be here. So that was really cool. There was a lot of updates and third party games talked about here and some interesting things that were coming to the Switch like Hellblade Senua's Sacrifice and Tetris 99. They showed Astral Chain and Link's Awakening Remake coming around, which was cool. Later on, we get a Pokemon Direct because Pokemon's still a franchise Nintendo has a partial ownership in. And this Pokemon Direct showed off Pokemon Sword and Pokemon Shield. And I was really excited about this game. I don't know if everybody was really excited about this game. They showed off some other stuff of the Pokemon game. I ended up liking Sword and Shield more or less. 2019. I don't even know. This this is a good year. It's a good year, but a weird year. They're, they're still, like, rolling out some older ideas, I think, that they had uh, before they, like, are working on projects that they came up with after the Nintendo Switch released. They're still, like, finishing up the stuff that they probably planned back in the Wii U era for whatever system would come out. And it's interesting to see how this goes. In March of 2019, we got a Nindies showcase where we got to see games like Cuphead and Cadence of Hyrule. In May, we saw a dedicated Super Mario Maker 2 Direct showing off that game. It's like Super Mario Maker 1, but on the Switch and newer. Then in June, we had another Pokemon Sword and Shield Direct. There was a lot of people really focused on this tree in particularly, and people started wondering if the Switch is maybe not up to par power Wise, I think it was more of like a developmental shortcut. I mean, they should be able to optimize things to run at optimal levels. So this tree might have been a cut corner or something. I don't know. People were really, really hyper fixated on this tree though. This Pokemon Direct was ultimately pretty cool though, I thought. This one also had a cool pre-rendered cinematic, so that's neat. Then we get to E3 2019, and right away we get another Smash reveal. The hero arrives for Smash from the Dragon Quest series, which was pretty cool. Dragon Quest 10, 11. What are these Roman numerals? Yeah, 11 Definitive Edition gets announced, and we get to see some more Luigi Mansion 3. Then, boom, Animal Crossing New Horizons is shown off, and honestly, I was so excited seeing this. All of the outdoor stuff, the vibes of being, like, on a getaway island or something. It was a really, really exciting presentation. I was so, so happy to see that. There also was going to be a small delay on Animal Crossing. It was supposed to come out at the end of 2019. They're pushing it to early 2020, and I guess it was fine. It obviously worked out very well for Nintendo if you knew the context of what happened happened when Animal Crossing released, but yeah, interesting. Then we get another Smash reveal, and this reveal goes crazy. We see some Donkey Kong characters, we see some stuff happening, and <gasps> no way. Is that Banjo-Kazooie, one of the most requested characters for Smash Bros ever, about to show up? And it's a fake out. They make you think that it's Banjo, but it's actually Duck Hunt just hanging out. But then, just kidding, it is Banjo, get wrecked after all. That was a pretty fun way to present that. They also announced that a sequel to The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was in development. And while they didn't have like a long list of brand new massive heavy hitters from Nintendo, they had a solid list of announcements. So E3 2019, they get a pretty good pass. We got an Indie World Showcase sometime later, they got rid of the name Nindies, so now they're called Indie World Showcase, for whatever reason. They showed off some interesting things like Boyfriend Dungeon, Dreamscaper, The Survivalists, and Axiom Verge 2, and that kind of closed off our year of 2019. Kind of short. 2020 was the year, of course, that everything changed, and um, Nintendo had a few unexpected successes, I think, that caught them off guard. And then the end of the year was like a bunch of like smaller showcases. So yeah, this year was weird for all of the gaming industry, but 2020 is interesting to look at. But 2020 would hit things right out of the park right away in February, right before the world ended. We got an Animal Crossing Direct and this showed off a lot of features of the game. And I don't know, they did such a great job at presenting Animal Crossing and making it look like a game that everybody wanted to play. Not just a handful of people, not just Animal Crossing fans. This was a game everybody needed to experience because it was just like chill. It was such a different vibe. It was before the onslaught of farming games were advertised, trying to capitalize on the cozy genre that 
that I don't think is really a thing. If a game is cozy, I mean, that's one thing, but like, I don't know how to explain it. You can't go into making a game wanting to make a cozy game. You just have to make an awesome game. And Animal Crossing was awesome. I mean, big picture. Like, you can have your individual little criticisms about like things New Horizons had its shortcomings on, but big picture, every new Animal Crossing mainline game is usually good. In March, we got another indie world showcase. We saw things like Eldest Souls, what a name that game is, and Exit the Gungeon. March 26th, we saw another Nintendo Direct Mini that was 30 minutes long. Xenoblade Chronicles Definitive Edition was shown off. We saw some 2K games, Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3. We got a Animal Crossing update because that game had now been released and Zipper the Bunny was coming. Get ready. People hated Zipper the Bunny the first year he was introduced because everyone's just like trying to get their island started and then bam, this bunny shows up and he puts eggs everywhere. And it's really annoying when you're trying to like collect resources to build stuff and like you're getting eggs instead of the resources you normally would get. They also showed off Catherine Full Body. This was an interesting game. It was made by Team Atlas, the people who are behind Persona. And the game came out quite a few years back on the Xbox 360, I think. It was kind of like a precursor to what Persona 5 would turn into. They tested a lot of things with like storytelling and animation. And now there was a Switch version that was going to have some extra storylines you could go and explore. Also, we found out there's gonna be a new Super Smash Bros character and it would be from ARMS, but they didn't reveal who it would be yet. They said the reveal would come later and it was later revealed that it was Min Min, like a couple months later. Then we found out about Bravely Default 2 and a few other games. And we found out that Pokemon Sword and Shield will have these expansion passes instead of us getting like a third version of the game. Later, we got another Pokemon Direct. We got some more DLC information. New Pokemon Snap. This was huge. I loved Pokemon Snap and I wanted a Pokemon Snap game so badly for so many years and for them to finally bring it, it was pretty cool. A little short, but it was a really cool experience. Then later on, we got a Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. We saw a few small games and the reveal of Shin Megami Tensei 5. We got another Indie World Showcase. Rest in peace, Nindies, once again. They showed off a few things. I don't know, Untitled Goose Game was one of them. Subnautica and Subnautica Below Zero. I don't know. The Indie Developer Showcases definitely are hit or miss for me. This year was weird. We got like a bunch of back and forths of mini directs and like the indie developer showcases. So the next thing we got was a Nintendo Direct mini partner showcase. They showed off Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memory. If the Kingdom Hearts series isn't confusing enough to figure out what order the games take place in, here's another one that's music based. So I don't know how that falls in the canon. This game is called Infuser. And you can see that my friends are digging it from all the fire emojis they're throwing up. Then they show off something like Minecraft Dungeons or some expansion or something. I don't know. But the big thing that was coming from Nintendo was their huge Super Mario Bros. 35th Anniversary Direct, where they showed off Super Mario 3D World and Bowser's Fury, which was cool. It was the Wii U game brought over to the Switch, plus like a little standalone Mario game that's not quite a full-fledged 3D game, but not quite like a spin-off game. I don't know. It was like a single level, but a giant single level. Then we got Super Mario Bros. 35 for a limited time. It's like a survival battle royale Mario game that wouldn't last forever. They announced Mario Kart Live Home Circuit, which is like Mario Kart, except you have like a race car actually driving through your house. We found out about a Mario Kart Tour event for the mobile app, which was interesting. And then Super Mario 3D All-Stars for a limited time. And why isn't Mario Galaxy 2 included in this? Did they just forget it existed? I mean, there's literally just like four main 3D Mario games everyone talks about. Uh, I guess Mario Galaxy 2 is probably going to come at a later date, right? Right? Okay, then they did a mini partner showcase. They showed off Monster Hunter Rise and Monster Hunter Story 2 Wings of Ruin and Ori and the Will of Wisps. Then they do a Monster Hunter exclusive direct for the two Monster Hunter games. And then later on, we got another mini partner showcase showing off other games that a lot of us knew were coming. Hitman 3, why not for the Switch? Then we get another Indie World Showcase. And I don't know, they showed off a couple of games. Super Meat Boy Forever, I guess was the biggest game announced. And now as we go into 2021, things start to pick up a little bit. We start to see some other things talked about and also some things that should have been talked about that they didn't talk about in a direct, which I thought was weird. February would hit things off with the announcement that Pyra was coming to Super Smash Bros. Also, Fall Guys coming to the Switch. There was a Mario update for Animal Crossing, kind of letting us know that before they abandon the game pretty much, here you go. There's gonna be some like a uh, couple new items coming. Uh, Triangle Strategy was shown off. Knockout City was shown off. Rest in peace, that game was amazing. I'm so sad they shut it down. And Skyward Sword HD was coming 
to the Nintendo Switch. I think I'm still hung up with the announcement of Splatoon 3. Also, the, you know, subtle reminder that this is the reason why Animal Crossing isn't getting updates anymore because Splatoon 3's development is in like full swing now. All right, we get a Pokemon Direct next. They do some nostalgia talk like they usually do. They talk a little bit about Pokemon Snap. They show off a new game called Legends of Arceus, which looks incredible. Incredible. And they announced Diamond and Pearl remakes by a company called Ilka, who've never made a game before. What could go wrong? These remakes um don't really look that great compared to the remakes that we saw for like Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. They chibified everything rather than, you know, using like the sword and shield engine to do it. Well, a lot of the community has a strong opinion about this game. And uh, I don't know. I played a bit of it and then that was about it. And then I stopped playing. So what could go wrong? Probably everything. Then we got another indie world showcase. They showed off a House of the Dead remake and Oxen Free 2. And then that brought us into E3 2021. And uh, there's a couple of things real quick that were worth talking about that happened then. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate X Tekken crossover where Kazuya was finally introduced into Super Smash Bros. We saw some stuff from Mario Party Superstars. Another Metroid game? Let's go. Is this Metroid Prime 4? <gasps> no, it was a uh, Metroid Dread, which was actually a solid game, just not the main game everybody's been wondering about for a while. They did do a video a while back saying that they were restarting development on Metroid Prime 4, so we'd have to wait longer, but man, it's been a while. Mario Golf Super Rush shown off. A new WarioWare game, Get It Together, was shown. Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. For some reason, they said, hey, make another game. Why not? They also showed off Advanced Wars 1 and 2 Reboot Camp, a remake of the Advanced Wars games. Then we get producer Eiji Onuma on the Legend of Zelda series. Are we finally going to get some new stuff about Zelda? Well, we find out a little bit about like Skyward Sword and uh, we find out a little bit about the Zelda Game & Watch system thing. I forgot all about this. But then they announced the big reveal. The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild sequel. Heck yeah. Also, all the Animal Crossing fans are wondering like, hey, just forget about the Animal Crossing games. Hello? Yeah, E3 2021's thing that Nintendo did, I guess it wasn't really E3, but it was kind of E3, was interesting, I guess. Nothing massive again, but I mean, the Zelda announcement went pretty hard. So at least we had that. After E3 2021, we went into the end of that year. They did an Indie World Showcase and they showed off Game Beasts and Axiom Verge 2. In September, we did get another full Nintendo Direct and they talked about a couple of things like Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak, more talk about Mario Party Superstars, Hyrule Warriors Age of Calamity Expansion Pack was coming. We finally got to see a new Kirby game in like a 3D form in the form of Kirby in the Forgotten Land. This game looked incredible. It was just the natural evolution for where Kirby had been going for years finally realized in like a true form 3D adventure. And yeah, this reveal was really solid. Then they announced that Animal Crossing fans weren't completely forgotten after all, and that there would be something in the future at some point. Hang in there and Animal Crossing Direct is coming. And that's what we had to wait for. Then they talked about Mario Golf Super Rush. A little talk on some other games we already knew about. We get to see the announcement for the Mario movie, which was definitely a big talking point online. And there's an expansion to Splatoon 3, Return of the Mammalians. Is this why Animal Crossing uh, was like just like forgotten about? And then they make a big Bayonetta reveal. Finally, after all of the wait at Animal Crossing being abandoned for the better part of the whole year, we finally got a direct on Animal Crossing. And I'll be honest, it was really, really incredible. They added a ton of quality of life upgrades to the game, a lot of new features, and they just like showed all that off. And then right when you're like, wow, that was amazing. They're like, hey, but there's more. And then they showed off Happy Home Paradise, which was kind of like an inspiration from Happy Home Designer, which we talked about earlier, except this time it was an actual just expansion. And you could go and play this essentially brand new Animal Crossing spinoff in Animal Crossing and the furniture items that you decorate with. So you could bring them back to your own houses. You could decorate your own villager houses. There was a lot to love about that expansion. The only downside really was essentially just the announcement that there wouldn't be anything new coming to Animal Crossing anymore period. New Horizons was done for, and that was pretty disappointing, I guess. But I will say, the new content kept me playing Animal Crossing for at least another four or five months, which was worth it at the time. 2022! Nintendo is on top of the world. They know that they are successful, and they know that now they've figured out a formula with these Nintendo Directs, and they're announcing strategies that works really well. I think, if anything, Nintendo Directs are now at, like, 
their peak success with all of these Super Smash Bros. Directs building its reputation to where it is now. Even if they don't talk about Super Smash Bros. anymore, Nintendo Directs are solidified in the minds of Nintendo fans. Now we're going into 2022 and the first Direct we get of 2022, we get to see some interesting things announced like Fire Emblem Warriors 3 Hopes. We saw some more Splatoon 3 stuff. Kingdom Hearts 3 game collection. That's hype. I uh, don't know if they fully disclosed that the games would be like a cloud collection and not running natively, which was a bit controversial. Do you remember how much fun Wii Sports was back in the day? Like, that was a solid game that came with all the Wiis. Well, finally, we get the announcement of Nintendo Switch Sports, and some of those games are back. Some of the games weren't back, though, but a lot of the games are back. Then we get to see some Mario Kart 8 Deluxe DLC. They're going to continue to support Mario Kart 8. They will do that for their number one best-selling game on the Switch, but not their number two, Animal Crossing. I'm still bitter about that. And then Xenoblade Chronicles 3 gets its big reveal, and that was kind of like the big thing to steal the show at this Nintendo Direct. Moving forward, there was an Indie World Showcase where they showed off Ooblets and another Crab's Treasure. There was then a Xenoblade Chronicles 3 Showcase showing the ins and outs of that game, which looked visually stunning for a Switch game all this time later. Then there was a Nintendo Direct Mini Partner Showcase. These names, Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak was shown off near Automata, the end of Yorha edition. Bam, on the Switch for you to experience. That was kind of cool. They showed off more Mario Rabbids Sparks of Hope. I think the biggest thing from this mini direct was the Persona series finally coming to the Switch, which is hype. During the summertime, there was no E3 this year, so Nintendo just kind of took it off and decided to come back around later on in the summer to do some stuff. In August, they did a Splatoon 3 direct, which looks cool, I guess. Honestly, they do a really good job stylistically with these games. I just never really could get into them. And obviously, you know, my rage about Animal Crossing blinds me. But I understand why people really like Splatoon. Tune. But September is when Nintendo did a full direct, bringing its guns out like it was a summer direct, and I don't know, they went pretty hard. They showed off Fire Emblem Engage to start things off. We saw a new Fatal Frame. There's some Xenoblade Chronicles expansion pass news. There's a lot of Splatoon 3, Octopath Traveler 2. They talk about more stuff coming to Mario Kart and the golf update to Nintendo Switch Sports finally on its way. Then the big reveal definitely was probably Pikmin Bloom, which was a mobile Pikmin game that I don't expect to do well. And then Pikmin 4 which was like the new Pikmin entry in a long time. People thought that Pikmin had been like fully abandoned, so there was some hype that Pikmin was back. Bayonetta 3 got a pretty big spotlight finally too, so we could see more of that game. They announced Kirby's Return to Dream Land Deluxe. And lastly, we got a name for the sequel to Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom, which looked incredible. After that, we got a Mario movie direct with Chris Pratt in it, who has this blur effect that makes it look like someone with greasy hands touched his camera. We get to see a trailer for the movie, and um, I guess that was like the first real look. In November, there was an Indie World Showcase. They showed off a couple of games like Goodbye World and Have a Nice Death. And that kind of just wrapped up 2022. Now, mind you, by 2023, and even in the past couple of years, Pokemon itself kind of shifted away from being a part of Nintendo Directs, and they were evolved into their own thing in Pokemon Presents. So that's why a lot of the time we don't see all of like the announcements for Pokemon because they're in their own separate Pokemon Presents. And like we said, we're just looking at Nintendo Directs. But it's very interesting how Nintendo utilized this as a method to double dip and promote things more than once by occasionally talking about Pokemon in regular Nintendo Directs as well. So going into 2023, we got a big Direct in February where they showed off a bunch of Pikmin 4. They showed off a new Bayonetta spin-off prequel game called Bayonetta Origins. Platoon 3 is getting a whole lot of support for a long time after it launched. We get to see some of Kirby's Return to Dreamland Deluxe. Metroid is getting something and it's Metroid Prime Remastered. Okay, we're still wondering what's up with Metroid Prime 4 at this point, but a Metroid Prime remaster is definitely appreciated. I just hope this means that they're gonna remaster Metroid Prime 2 and 3 so people could get caught up before Metroid Prime 4 comes out hopefully soon. They talk about more Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster Course Pass DLC, but the big stealing moment is of course the trailer for The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Then in March, we're back with another Mario movie 
trailer direct. This was the final one that showed off like the actual movie for the trailer. We all know how that went. The movie ended up doing very, very well. So big W for Nintendo. In April, there was an indie showcase. They showed off games like My Time at Sandrock, Desert Storm, whatever the game's called. FNAF Security Breach was also shown off. And then in June, there was no E3, but Nintendo did do a direct. And I somehow missed talking about the Pokemon announcement they did earlier on Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, but that was like a thing. And then the game came out and now they're talking about Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. I don't know how, did they not call it a Pokemon Direct? That had to have been why we missed it. Okay, it was a Pokemon Presents, not a Pokemon Direct. So it wasn't on our list, but yeah, they did announce that. Maybe we'll look more into it when we do like a dedicated Pokemon video. But uh, yeah, DLC coming there. They announced Sonic Superstars, which was coming to the Switch, a game that I felt like was pretty overpriced. Detective Pikachu Returns. Uh, I never played this one, but apparently visually the game did not look very good. So I don't know if this one ended up being good. If anyone played this game, please let me know and tell me what you think. They announced a Super Mario RPG remake, which was so hype, what? People have wanted this for so long, so for it to finally be announced is a pretty big deal. They also announced a Princess Peach game, because, you know, they're trying to stack their stuff up because of the movie. Luigi Mansion 2 is coming to the Switch, and then they also talked about Dragon Quest and the Dark Prince, talked about Pikmin 4, new Mario Kart 8 Deluxe Booster DLC, and a new Super Mario game at the end of the year, Super Mario Wonder, which actually, I mean, kind of looks fun. Let's be real. In August, we got a dedicated direct just about Super Mario Wonder, so that was awesome. Then in September, there were a bunch of things, talked about some more, more Splatoon 3 stuff with the Side Order DLC, Mario vs. Donkey Kong, F-099, a Battle Royale F-Zero game based on, I think, the Super Nintendo version of the game, which looks really, really cool. The first F-Zero game in years since the GameCube era, so this was pretty big moment for the F-Zero franchise. And they talk a bit more about Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door. All right, hopefully this one will actually be good. And this brings us up to 2024, where we are now. 2024, the year that we're in. What a ride this has been. This has been a weird year for Nintendo Directs, I think. But I think in the grand scheme of context, of everything. It must mean something, right? We're just gonna run through these and get caught up to real time because they announced some interesting things. I think big picture we need to talk about, but uh, ultimately, what a ride this has been. The directs nowadays are so much different from what they were way early on. Now they're just like a hyper sizzle reel of everything coming. I kind of miss some of the old charm they used to have. And I miss Reggie whenever he retired. That was sad too. Okay, February 2021. They talk about like Monster Hunter stories, Shin Megami Tensei 5, Vengeance with some new stuff or something. Uh, there's a new Contra game, Endless Oceans Luminous, cool. Pretty okay for a partner direct, but then we get in to the final direct that we've had at the time of recording this video. This was in replacement of the E3 conference that was now shut down, rest in peace. And a lot of you probably know about these games. So we don't have to talk about them for too, too long, but they mostly talk about Mario and Luigi Brothership, the first mainline Mario and Luigi game in like nine years. There's a basketball update coming to Nintendo Switch Sports. Where's baseball, by the way? Donkey Kong Country Returns HD. Cool, I guess. They showed off uh, Luigi's Mansion 2, Super Mario Party Jamboree. A brand new Super Mario Party game, but this time it's a jamboree. I, I mean, there's a lot of Mario Party games out there. This looks kind of like the rest of them, but it looks like they put more maybe like money or budget into this one where like they're gonna maybe make it bigger than previous games. I don't know, the word jamboree makes me just have high expectations that this is gonna be like something really cool. They showed off the Legend of Zelda Echoes of Wisdom, which uses the art style from the Link's Awakening remake, but it's a Zelda game where we actually play as Zelda for the first time, which means that all the gameplay and mechanics is gonna be completely different. So this could be really cool. Just Dance 2025, baby. Man, the Just Dance series is never going to die. They talk about some other things. I wasn't really too interested in them. Do you know they kept making games all the way through, like, I think Just Dance 2020 released on the original Wii? But then, finally, after all this time, we get a reveal of Metroid Prime 4 with the new subtitle Beyond. The game actually exists. And that's where we are now. Um, I didn't think this video would be as big as it ended up being, but it was a lot of fun to look at every Nintendo Direct. I'd love to know what you guys thought about all of this, so let me know in the comments down below. I've 
don't usually do face cam on this channel for parts of videos, but I got this microphone that I can hold instead. So I feel like more free to talk and not as stiff as I was with the other microphone. Maybe I'll do more with this occasionally just to mix things up a little bit, have more than just monotonous gameplay B-roll all the time. Um, but if you hate it, you can tell me that too. That's okay. Uh, anyways, make sure you're subscribed if you want more videos like this. I cover a ton of Nintendo, Pokemon, Animal Crossing stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time with a new video.